is God. It's God logic. Is God logic? Okay, let's do this, guys. One second, guys. Everyone ready? I don't see where. What? What? See ya. See ya. Where are you, see ya? Hold on, guys. Just give me a second. Is God logic? See ya. Where are you, see ya? See ya. See ya. What happened here? I don't know why I do that. If you ask me, don't ask me because I don't know why I do that. Okay, give me a few seconds, guys. We'll be there. It's got logic. Hey, how's everybody doing? About to begin now, guys. Hit the like on Rumble. Obviously, you can still do that. And if you want the channel's number of viewers to increase, share the link. Invite folks because we want to build this up of quality people. We want large number of quality people, but not large number. People want to come and learn. So let's do that. Sam, what up, Sam? I don't know. What's are you okay? All right, let's see. All right, we ready? It's got logic. It's got logic. Everyone, everyone in the saddle. Let's see. Glory to the Father, Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. <clears throat> The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, to ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, <clears throat> Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We ask, Abba, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, purge us in the purifying fire of the Holy Spirit. Purge my daughters, our loved ones. Purifying fire of the Holy Spirit, purify, wash, and cleanse us, Father. Our loved ones, my daughters, in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, your Son, your heart, the eternal companion of the Holy Spirit. And we ask, Father, the Lord Jesus Christ will shine in and through us and increase in us. We will decrease, and the Lord Jesus will sit and throne upon our hearts, the hearts of our loved ones, my daughters. And I ask, Abba, Father, for mercy, for grace, for patience. Have mercy on us, Father. Have mercy on, on me, a hypocrite. Destroy hypocrisy from us. Destroy the beams in our eyes. We ask, Father, that you destroy every form of blasphemy, idolatry from our lives. Control our tongues and mouths fully and completely to never allow our mouths, our tongues, to betray or die or shame or blaspheme our God, Father, Son, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, owning us, sealing us, possessing us, flooding us and our loved ones. My daughters, we glorify the Lord Jesus Christ even unto death. I ask, Father, that you bless the works of our hands. Set us free from our bondage to the flesh. Set me free from lust, from impurities and morality. Set me free from my addiction of food and gluttony. And I pray that you do that for all of us and all our illnesses and weaknesses. Set us free. Crucify our flesh. Destroy the fruits of our flesh. Fill us with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Righteous deeds from the Holy Spirit. Virtues of the Holy Spirit. To hate what you hate, love what you love, and die to ourselves, <clears throat> die to the world, overcome the world through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and crush Satan on our feet by the power of the blood of the cross of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me, Father. Please, Lord, I ask for forgiveness for my weakness, and I ask, Father, 
that your will be done in our lives, that we know your will and love your will, live out your will perfectly by the power of the Holy Spirit, both your prescriptive will, the Holy Scriptures, and what your will is in these daily activities. And Father, I ask that this young lady, I'm Jesus to her, and it's your will. We come together and I honor her for the glory of Jesus and be Jesus to her and not a burden on her. So, Lord, please, I ask, help me, Lord, to go to higher level. Help me to practice what I preach. All of us destroy the beams in our eyes, destroy our fears, doubts, unbelief. Give us perfect faith in you, hope in you, perfect love for you, for the Son, the Lord Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. And I ask, Father, that you give us strict discipline spiritually and physically to engage in intense spiritual disciplines, whether prayer or singing, Bible meditation, application, <clears throat> getting to confession, fellowshipping with like-minded believers, going to the church, getting to our bishop and priest and taking the Holy Eucharist, which is the nourishment you've given us, the food you've given us, and the medicine you've given us, because our Lord Jesus has spoken. His flesh is true food and his blood is true drink given to us to make us whole and heal us and purify us and purge us and transform us spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, and physically. Help me, Lord. Help us all to do that, Lord. And help me to be a man of integrity, not to prostitute myself for money, for numbers, for status. Save me from that, to finish the race. Though I stumble and succumb, empower me to get back up, confess my sins, and love you, Father. All of us, I pray this for all of us, Love the Lord Jesus, love the Holy Spirit, love your word and live out your word boldly without being politically correct, without tickling ears, without prostituting ourselves, even unto death until the Lord returns. Have your way. Let Jesus shine in and through us and beatify us with the love of the Lord Jesus, the grace, the compassion, the mercy, the patience, the beauty, the holiness, the purity, the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he sent and thrown upon our hearts, the hearts of our loved ones, my daughters. Please, Father, have your way. And I ask Abba, Guide us. These ministries we give to you completely. My YouTube channel, Rumble channel, my blog articles, my social media pages, yours entirely. <clears throat> I give it to the Son entirely, to the Holy Spirit entirely. And our lives, our bodies, our souls, our spirits, our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our ears, our hands and feet, fingers and toes, desires of our hearts, thoughts of our minds, all we are, every cell, our money, our family members, my daughters, we give to you, Father, to the Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Own us, seal us. We exist for you. You are our existence. And I pray we practice what we preach and not put on a show. And I ask God, we ask, Abba, we ask you who are the God and Father, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, destroy unrighteous anger, unholy hatred. And we ask that you purge our motives. Help me, Father. Grant me perfect recall of every jot, total portion of Scripture. Perfect exegesis. And give us power to then live out the Word. Your voice in Scripture, which is the voice of your Son, the voice of the Holy Spirit, because you speak in one perfect Word with the Son and the Spirit. The voice in Scripture, John, all other voices in our lives, in our <clears throat> loved ones' lives, and lives of my daughters. And enslave us, transform us, empower us by your voice to love and live out your voice. We need your voice, the voice of your Son. And the Spirit. Teach us how to pray to you, how to praise you, how to love you, how to live for you, how to glorify you, to be men and women integrity, not to pretend to be something we're not, but also, Father, protect us from false brethren who want to see us fall and shame us. Protect us from these dogs and teach them your fear until they repent. And again, the work you've begun in us, finish it. In Jesus' name, for the sake of the beloved, your Son who has purchased us by his blood. We trust in you, Father. We trust in the Lord Jesus. We trust in your Holy Spirit. Let him teach and use me and make us doers of your word and have mercy on us. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bring them, Abba. Bring them, Son of God. Bring the Holy Spirit for your glory. Glory to the Father and the Spirit. Okay, guys, we're back tonight. Marcy, good to see you, sister. All right, Lord, Father and Spirit. You guys know the rules, all right? You know the rules. What are the rules? Same thing as in YouTube. You're not going to pontificate here. You're not going to ask irrelevant questions. You're not going to attack us, think you're better than us, holier than us, more virtuous than us. You're not going to come and help me by chiming in. You're not going to cause distractions as John Rambo did. I'm going to block you, mute you, remove you. 
You're going to let the Holy Spirit work through me. He's the teacher. May I be his mouthpiece and engage me and give me feedback because it's a class. We want the Holy Spirit to run it for the glory of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So may the Holy Spirit give me the perfect health I need and holiness and purity and not to be a hypocrite. Strict discipline, spiritually and physically. Strengthen my throat, my heart, my lungs, my chest, my arteries for the glory of the Father and of the Son, Lord Jesus, and for the glory of the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord willing, we will be blessed. Now, just to let you know, if you look at my Rumble page, Rumble page, thank you, Jerby, I have linked to the backup channel. And I'm going to share it here. Glory to the triune God. I was just informed by Jeremy, who owns Christ overall. Our precious brother Romeo was able to download every single video from my YouTube session. Now they're going to be slowly premiering them. So glory to the Father, Holy Spirit. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Lord Jesus. Glory to the Holy Spirit. They have saved all the videos. So let me give you, right? The channel. It's saved. So glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Channel is saved. Here it is. Right here. Let's go. Let me find it. All right. Right here. There it is. They've downloaded them. So it's there. Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There it is. So that means even if my channel's deleted, it's saved. This is our backup channel officially. And others have been downloading them. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Glory to the Father and the Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, remember, these brothers don't get paid. They do it out of their love for the Lord Jesus Christ, not even me. I'm not worth it. Because they love the Lord Jesus and because they believe in this ministry and the Lord's using it, they took time from their busy schedules free of charge, and they did all this out of their love for Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I want to recognize the people. I'm going to give you their names. You know Jeremy, Christ overall. He's one of my mods. Romeo, he has a YouTube channel. He's one of my mods. So he said, hey, brother, great news. Romeo has downloaded all your videos from your channel. Only left is to upload and pre premiere them one by one. That's what they're doing. Go there. Make this channel go viral, right? And let me give you the names of the people who have been helping him. Here they go. Jeremy, Romeo. Catholic Biblicist, Arthur, and Answers Theology. These precious brothers did it out of their love for the Father, the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? Here they are. Jeremy as well. Christ over all Jeremy. So it's saved now. Now, because I have now 90 days before they remove the two strikes, I have 90 days. What does that mean? If I get a third strike, in these next 90 days, my channel's deleted. So I have to be wise, and I need your prayers for constraint, and the Lord protect the channel from censorship. That means July 27, when the two-week ban is removed, I will be posting more on Rumble and rarely on YouTube for at least three months, 90 days. For at least three months. Okay, are you with me there? That means I will be sharing articles on my community page. I will even announce on my community page when I'm going live on Rumble, and I will try to do sessions here and there, but to be safe, I will try not to do any streams for three months, which means people are gonna have to come watch here. But I'll announce it, Lord willing, because I have to tread lightly and not do much for three months. Because after three months, by the grace of the trying God, those strikes were removed, and I start from scratch. So pray for my grace, constraint, only in security, and a blessing. So this is going to be it, this and Facebook. So once in a while, I'll do YouTube. Once in a while. Once in a while, but not always. So there you go. Now, another thing. It was brought to my attention. And I want to make some things clear to all of you. How, how I roll. What is my policy? It was brought to my attention. Warren McGrew meant well. Victor Cast Shamunian. What does that mean? Victor Cast. Oh, my Rumble is right here. Uh, you guys, don't you check my Facebook? You're on my Facebook, right? On my Facebook, I announce when I'm on Rumble. It's right there. But here, let me get you my Rumble channel. Here it is. Rumble here. Okay. Now, Warren McGroom means well. He's a good brother, loves the Lord. But let me be politically incorrect. You guys know I'm not politically incorrect. Here it is. This is my Rumble account. 
there it goes right here. That's my Rumble account. So let me show it on the screen. Right here. Here it is. So there is the link. That's my Rumble account. Now, my own channel, we are up to 250,000. So I don't want to lose it. But if God's will be done and he wants to delete it, amen, we start from scratch. We're up to 250,000. Within a year, I got over 100,000 subscribers. All glory to the Father, to the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit. So there's my Rumble account. Here's the Shemunian where I can't post. So you go to YouTube. You go here. We have now 250,000 subscribers. You see? It's right there. Now, may the Lord be pleased to preserve this. He doesn't need me, but if it shuts down, then we lose 250,000 subscribers. There it is. 250,000 subscribers. Yep, exactly, Paul Ross. Now, what does that mean? It means that within a year's time, I jumped over 100,000 subscribers exponentially. So can you guys see it? You guys see it, right? So there it is. So I have to tread lightly. So that means I'm going to have to spend more time on Rumble, build it up, and I won't be streaming as much for 90 days. That means count 90 days. Let's count July 15. So that's August 15, September 15, October 15. That means October, I have to be careful. So guys, you're going to have to endure. We'll still be doing stuff here, and I'll do stuff here and there, but I have to be very careful. Unless the Lord does something miraculous and just removes those two strikes. We'll see. So there you go. Now, just to let you know something before I begin, I will be continuing the series I began on my YouTube here and finishing it, all of them, Lord willing, and new topics. Now, Warren McGrew meant well. He's a good brother. One thing I don't like, and I'm letting everyone know I don't like this. I don't like when people act as messenger girls for Muslims or heretics and Bible butchers. What do I mean? People think they're doing me a favor. People think they're doing me a favor. When they send me links to people attacking me, critiquing me, right, or calling me out, you're not doing me a favor. What you're doing is you're being used of Satan to try to cause me to stumble. To sin in my heart, may God purify my heart. May I have the heart of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the heart of the Lord Jesus, and pray that for all of us. And what you're doing is you're giving them free publicity. You're being used by them, and you're being an agent of Satan with good intentions because that's what they want. They want the publicity. They want the numbers, and they're going to use me to get numbers, hoping that they get your attention, and they win. And I despise them. Okay? Everyone with me there? I despise them. Now, I I was told today, and I'm going to be politically incorrect right here. So, again, you know my channel. I'm not politically correct. I'm politically incorrect, and I don't care for opinions. As long as the Holy Spirit is not angry with me, and he convicts me and changes me and constrains me. For the glory of the Father, the Holy Spirit. For the glory of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Okay. I'm not politically correct. There are some people I despise, and I have no respect for. And you know who they are. May the Lord heal me of unrighteous hatred. And I call them out. Two of them I'd love to debate. Anthony Rogers and James White. Okay. Those two I want to debate because they have platforms that they don't deserve. And I want to abuse the Holy Spirit to crush and decimate them. Show them they're Bible butchers and not as smart as people think. May God purify my heart not to do it out of pride. Okay. All right. Now, that's two. Two individuals, but I'm going to tell you some other people I dislike, and I really think they're low lives. And may God not give me what I deserve and hand me over and treat me accordingly and save me from becoming that. When I pray that they come under repentance, you guys know I don't have much respect for Kelly Powerless. I think he's an effeminate queer bait. I don't think he's normal. I'm not normal. I got psychological issues, at least I admit it. And I think he is terrible. And he's out to make a name, and he's one of the worst debaters. Okay, so everyone with me there? Another guy that I personally dislike to the point that I want to decimate and destroy to expose, to show, he's a Bible butcher. He's a clown. 
But because of the internet, people are clowns or tools of Satan who think they know the Lord in the Bible are given platforms they don't deserve. And that's J.P. Slut, a.k.a. J.P. Cut. Now, I like Praise I Am because he's shown a willingness to change. And I don't want to offend him, but he likes J.P. Slut. The guy is one of the most ignorant and stupid apologists online. This is my honest assessment. Twice he's come on my live stream. And instead of bringing up objections, he appealed to sympathy like a narcissist because I said that he's a son of a whore. Instead of engaging me and bring up his objections, I do not like him. I think he's a, how, how do I say this? He's another Bible pervert clown who's inept. He's a joke. And he will last more than 10 minutes because he doesn't know how to do exegesis. And I would love nothing more than to decimate and destroy him without having to hide behind time limits and debates. But he knows better. He knows he won't do it. So I mention that only because today I found out because of Warren McGrew, he was doing a response to communion of the saints. And whose picture does he use? Mine. Why? To get more viewers. See, these guys, in my estimation, are spiritual, sorry to say this, prostitutes, sluts. They're looking for numbers so get more people to then finance their ministry so they can do full-time ministry. And they know if they mention particular individuals, they'll get more attention. Yeah, and he is a joke. I actually consider him worse than Kelly Powerless. And I mean that. I'm not saying to say it. He is a tool of Satan. Now, the sad thing is that he shared platforms with Avery, who is a solid brother. And so that's his choice. God bless our brother Avery. And the Lord preserve Avery. Because I don't know if you guys know it, Avery is on a journey. He's studying the early Christians. He's studying what the early Christians believe. And it will be a matter of time. Remember me. It will be a matter, remember my words, a matter of time. He will come to the fullness of the truth. Just mark my words and remember me when I said that. It's a matter of time. Because anyone who seriously looks at early church history and looks at the church that the Holy Spirit used to preserve the Bible will not remain Protestant. Will not remain Protestant. This is a fact. Now, why did I mention J.B. Slut? Now, he did do a session, and my policy is I will not watch. I will not watch people attacking me. And I'll, let me explain to you why. Let me tell you why. You guys want to know why? Because I don't want to sin in my heart and have unrighteous hatred because I don't want the Lord to crush me. I want the Lord in his mercy to preserve me, forgive me, because I have a lot of issues I struggle with. My own vices, lust and food. And I ask God for favor that I'll finish the race in holiness and glorify Jesus Christ. And that the Lord preserve me until then. The last thing I need is to have unrighteous hatred. And the Lord then repay me in kind. May the Lord in his mercy never do that. Okay. So I don't watch this. So I don't hate these guys and I don't respect them or their exegesis. Now, however, if you guys are interested, go to JB slot. So I don't want to give him viewership. JB slot. Go see what he has to say. Come to me, bring me his best arguments and I'll decimate them for your benefit. Now, if William wants to do a response to the video, then we'll do that. But he is a joke. He's a clown. He's a tool of Satan. Now, we pray he repents, a Bible pervert, and he's very stupid and biblically illiterate. That's just a fact. I don't respect him and consider him a Christian. May the Lord convict me and not hand me over and <clears throat> view me in the same way. And I pray the Lord convicts him to repent. So, now, with that said, the news is now all over the Internet. The Muslims have caught on. The Muslims have caught on. And now the Muslims are irate over this fact. You guys know this because she came on my live stream. Unbeknownst to me, she's been watching me. Unbeknownst to me, she's been watching me. And she was on my live stream. Apostate prophet's wife has now publicly confessed she's a Christian. 
and she has deep love for the Orthodox Church. And now it's caught the attention of Muslims because they're doing responses to the fact that apostate prophets has become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and is looking into the Orthodox Church, right? They're now responding to that. They're irate and livid. Irate and livid. Now, you guys remember my YouTube, what, three weeks ago? She commented on my channel. She goes, yeah, she's been watching me, and she's considering orthodoxy. Well, I'm going to show you her account. Let me find it. Her, is it her Twitter account? Let me find it. So let's go there. Let's go there. So, Jeremy, if you want me to respond, if he has, because there is no way of refuting community saints. You can't do it. It's impossible if you're going to honest the scripture. So I know the guy's a dog, J.B. Slut. But anyway, let me show you. So rejoice. And then that leads me to one more point I wanted to make about when I go to the channels of Protestants who I consider my brother, sister, Lord Jesus Christ, what my policy is. All right. Let's see. Here it goes. Yeah, it is Twitter. Here's her Twitter account. Here it is. Let's go there. All right. Let's go here and watch her. Here it is. All right. Now here's her account. And I said it over two years ago. Watch and see. Apostate prophet will come to Christ. He'll worship the Lord Jesus Christ and become a Christian. So there it is. Let me now share it with you guys on Rumble. Yeah, we're going to have to build it up, Joel, because I got to stay here for at least three months. Make it my main channel. Yeah. No, he is trash, Jeremy. He's a dog. JP Slut is a clown. He's a fat slob. I consider one of these effeminate queer baits. The Lord rebuke him until he repents. Now, he can come to the truth, but let me show you, okay? Look at right here. Look at what she said. I now understand what it means to take a leap of faith. I now understand what it means to take a leap of faith. I feel like God jumped without being 100% certain about my conviction, and God caught me. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. She announced it publicly. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Welcome back to the family. The Lord Jesus Christ is good, and he continually has mercy on all of us. We all breathe his oxygen. God is good all the time, even when we don't understand the wise. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Look what she says here. Thank you for your comment. I'm trying to do the right thing and believe in God. I'm a work in progress. Here it is. And you're going to see she's fascinated about the Orthodox Church. Now, remember what I said. Catholics, rejoice. She's going to an ancient church. Yes, I know you want to be Catholic, but would you rather her be an atheist or someone who now loves and worships Lord Jesus Christ and is in the Orthodox tradition and vice versa? Right? Don't let your love for your church blind you to say, ah, oh, well, who cares? She's not a Christian. She's on her way. Come on, man. Expand your mercy. God meets people where they're at, and he has mercy on them, which will lead me to my other point in a minute. Right? Everyone with me there? There it goes. There's a link. Right there. Did I share it? There you go. And then she says something about the Orthodox Church. Let me enlarge the screen. Let me show you so you can see it. So now what does that tell you? Apostate prophet is okay with it. He's okay with it. Right? But she did have something about the Orthodox Church when I went to her channel. Let me see if I can find it. Here it is. Mrs. Apostate reposted. Global Orthodox. She reposted this. You see? That's on her Twitter. Right? It is of great significance if there is even one person truly prays in a family. Prayers, prayer attracts God's grace and all the members of the family feel it. Look what she quotes here. 11 hours ago. The sons of the world consider distraction to be innocent, but the Holy Father is considered to be beginning of all evil. Saint Ignatius Brian Khaninov. She posted this 11 hours ago. See? She's there, guys. Again, 
Mrs. Apostate repented. Look, do you see her name is repentant? She now adds she's repentant. See it? Look what she posted. When was this? 18 hours ago. The devil seeks to continually sift us like we forcing us to spin in the whirlwind of entertainments and diversions, not allowing us to collect ourselves and contemplate our inner state, our soul. There you go. How many of you are how many of you guys are excited about this? How many guys are excited about this? Right? There you go. You guys excited about it? Now, what will this mean if now Anthony Rogers, who needs David Wood to open doors for him and finance him, who is pretty much a spiritual prostitute, because he will join David Wood, he'll join apostate prophet, and he will tag along with David Wood, and David Wood gets him invited to places when he's an rabid, anti-Orthodox, anti-Catholic, will he now show that he loves his God more than being a spiritual prostitute who will prostitute himself to get invited to places and to speak and say, well, I can't work with you, David, because apostate prophet's wife is Orthodox and I bash the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church because they preach a false gospel? Or is he going to expose himself as a spiritual prostitute that he is and tool of Satan? What do you think? Because if he's a man of integrity and he really believes what he believes, because he wouldn't appear on answering Adventism's program anymore because he platforms me. And I wonder if he's going to appear with Avery because he platforms me because of his hatred for Catholicism and Orthodoxy. Well, now this spiritual prostitute appear with David and apostate prophet when they invite them, when they invite him, or is he going to be a man, true to his conviction, say, I'm sorry, I can't work with you. We know he's a spiritual prostitute. He will prostitute himself for numbers and a platform. You'll see. Because if he's sincere about his convictions, what the hell are you going to do now that she's now orthodox, and that means apostate prophet, will be looking into the Orthodox tradition and join his wife and be baptized in the Orthodox Church and now worship the Triune God according to the Orthodox liturgy. And David Wood has no problem working with apostate prophet or even Robert Spencer, who's Orthodox. Now, will this prostitute now say, I can't work with you, David? You know he's not because he's a prostitute. He's a thug. It's the truth. I'm not slandering. I'm being very honest. Right? If he's really a man of integrity, go watch some of the clips he uh, posts bashing the Orthodox Church, misquoting the early church writers, bashing the Catholic Church. And now let's see if he's a man of integrity. Let's see if he's going to say now, David, I can't work with you. My love for Jesus is greater than my love for money to get supported and numbers. And I know that you open doors for me that otherwise would not be open because of my connection with you. But I love Christ more than money and my belly and numbers. Let's see. Call him out on it. Call him out. Say, hey, fat cow. What are you going to do now? Right? But we know they're not servants of the Lord. May God save us from them and save us from ourselves until, right, they can get convicted, repent, then we'll embrace them. Right? But now this leads me to my other point. I've been consistent, and I pray I stay consistent. And I'm not saying this is your view, right? This is your view or that I'm right. I'm a sinner. I have issues. God save me. Forgive me, not crush me, destroy me, not hand me over and be patient with me in his love and mercy. Remove the means of my eyes. I'm not your standard. May the Lord have mercy on me because if I'm wrong, may destroy all error and sin in me and show me so I can repent. My position is this. I've said it clearly. I do believe there are true believers born of the Spirit in all the major branches of Trinitarian Christianity. I have acknowledged and I'll always acknowledge there are true believers in the Protestant churches who love Jesus Christ because God meets them where they're at 
And if they don't know any better, and this is what they're convinced of, as long as they believe the Bible is God's word, historically accurate, and that the Jesus of history is the Jesus of the Gospels, and they love and worship the triune God, the Lord has mercy on them, meets them where they're at, and their theology will be perfected in glory if they endure. This is my position. It's always been my position. Yes, I hate Calvinism. Yes, I hate the five points of Calvinism. Yes, I know they're Calvinists. They're not Christians. They are wolves, tools of Satan. Anthony Rogers is one of them, being honest with you. Louis Fagadart is another. James White is another, right? But there are Calvinists that I've met who are convinced Calvinism is true. And because of that, they don't know any better, but they are good people who love Jesus and agonize over Calvinism and acknowledge Catholics and Orthodox as brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll mention two of them. C. Michael Patton. C. Michael Patton. And Rob Bowman, they love Catholics, Orthodox. They believe they're true believers who worship the Lord Jesus Christ. They're convinced that Calvinism is true, right? And they're stuck with it, but they're very gracious and humble. In fact, Rob, Rob Bowman is so gracious and humble, he debated Scott Hahn on justification, one of the most fruitful debates and most respectful debates because they treat each other as brothers with respect. Do you want me to get you that link to that debate? You want me to get you that link to that debate? A young Rob Bowman and a young Scott Hahn debated justification in the most loving and gracious manner, treating each other as brothers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I, I, you guys didn't know about it, huh? All right. Here. Here, let me share it with you. I'll show it on the screen. On the screen, Scott Hahn, Rob Bowman. Here it is. I'll get you the link. There it is. This is Rob Bowman Jr. If you don't know who he is, Rob Bowman, I'll get you the link, is one of the leading scholars, one of the Premier scholars, apologist on the Trinity and the deity of Jesus Christ. He's the one that I mentioned who wrote one of the best books on the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ in the 20th century called Putting Jesus in His Place. Remember that? He's now updating it. It's much more bigger, has over 100 pages, and it's now retitled Incarnate Christ and His Critics. That's him. One of the best. Absolutely phenomenal. In my estimation, putting Jesus in his place was the best book. The second edition will blow it away. It'll be that much better. Here's a link. They treated each other as brothers with respect. And Rob Bowman is one of the finest gentlemen and scholars on the Trinity you'll meet. He's phenomenal. Everyone got it now? Did you get the link? Phenomenal. So now why am I mentioning this? Here's my policy, and I've been honest, and I pray I'm a man of integrity. The Lord forgive me for failing and transform me, and the Lord preserve me, and I can be a blessing to this young lady if it's his will. Because we'll be getting married if it's God's will, and I believe it is, in the Catholic Church, right? Lord willing. Because thank the Lord, God's will be done. She spoke to the priest, and he said yes. Both of us, because our marriages were not, sacramental they were not valid we will receive annulments so god's will be done as long as i can be jesus to her lord lord's will be done as long as the lord knows i can honor her and the lord have mercy on us lord's will be done he knows what's best for her it's not just about me anyway with that said so point being i've always tried to be consistent i've always tried to be consistent and Here's my policy. When I'm invited, when I'm invited to a forum by a Protestant evangelical Christian, and I go, you know what that tells you? You know what that tells you? Okay, let me, let me tell you what that tells you. That tells you I acknowledge him as a brother in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's number one. If I didn't think he's a brother in the Lord Jesus Christ, I wouldn't go there. 
Yeah, I've been off the market for a while, a while Lepanto. So God's will be done. As long as I can be Christ to her, not a burden. Pray for that. Lord, please, so I can finish the race with integrity and not be a burden. And the Lord bless my daughters to be accepting of it. Anyway, if I'm on a channel of a Protestant that tells you I acknowledge that person as a brother in Christ, that's number one. Number two, I'm not there to, quote, unquote, proselytize, to convert people to the ancient past. What do I mean? As I said on Avery channel earlier, I'm going to say it again. I want people to find the fullness of the truth, but that's their journey. Meaning, I'm convinced the fullness of the truth will be found in the ancient traditions. Orthodox and Catholic. That's it. That's the only two. They've been around before Protestantism. Sadly, they're in schism. And the main, there's other issues, but really at the heart of the matter, because you'll have Perry Robinson saying even the Christology is a major disagreement between the Western and Eastern churches. But really, it's the filioque and the papacy, right? Everything else may be also important, but these two issues are it. If the Lord would be pleased to bring them together, the church would be indestructible. But again, the way it's going, I don't think there'll be union until our Lord returns. But we do our part to heal schism, not increase the schism. I do believe the fullness of the truth is found in the ancient paths, but that's your journey. I will not come on the channel of a Protestant and try to convert people to the Catholic faith or the Orthodox faith. That's your journey. I love you. I respect you. Don't bash me. Don't attack me because I don't want to insult you, but that's your journey. Let the spirit guide you. And if you're open to the truth and you're seeking, I promise you, if you're seeking from your heart and you ask the Holy Spirit to show you, he will show you where the fullness of the truth is, and you'll leave Protestantism. But if you remain in that situation, and you are convinced that the Bible is all you need, the Lord meets you where you're at, and he sees where you're at, and he sees what you don't know, because it's one thing to know the truth, and in your heart, you know it's the truth. You know it's the truth, and you still reject it. Then you are accountable. It's another thing when you're not convinced that something is true and in your heart you think you're honoring God by not accepting it because you believe if you accept it, you're dishonoring God and God sees that. This is what the Catholic Church calls invincible ignorance. You with me there? This is what I believe. I may be wrong. That's okay. Forgive me. Don't agree with me. I'm not your standard. That's where I'm at. May the Lord show me if I'm wrong. You, you see my point. You understand where I'm going with this? All right. Now, with that said, let me give you a praise report, and we can begin. All of these comments were necessary. Now, guys, call out Anthony Rogers. Say, hey, Anthony, what are you going to do now? Say, you who bash the Orthodox and Catholic traditions, you who think you know the Bible and church history, and you're a fraud, are you still going to join David Wood? And go to conferences like you just did about a week ago and let David Wood be your sugar daddy. I'm not disrespecting David Wood. David Wood is a lion. He's a warrior, a lion who loves the Lord. And he's been consistent. He brings in Catholics. He'll bring in Orthodox. But it's this low-life thug criminal who masquerades as a Christian who bashes Orthodox and Catholics, slandered me, which now he regrets because I'm going to bury him by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, hey, Anthony. Apostate prophet's wife is now joining the Orthodox Church. That means sooner or later he's going to be Orthodox. Why do you still go on David Wood's platform and associate with David Wood? Are you a spiritual prostitute? You're going to sell your soul for numbers and money? Let's see if you're really a man. Cut off ties with David Wood. But we know you won't because you're a fraud and the Lord rebuke you. See, that's what happens. The Lord will continue to rebuke you and shame you until you repent. All right. Now, with that said, let me give you a praise report. I just got this today. Are you ready? In my email. I just got this today. In my email. Here you go. And then we're going to go through this video. A young man who tried his best, but man, I don't know. He was witnessing Joe's witnesses, and it was uh, uh, was kind of cringe. And he has another one, so I'll probably go through that, because this will help teach us, and hopefully him, how not to evangelize and how to evangelize. Here's a praise report that I got. 
an email from an ex-Muslim became a Christian. And guess where? From Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. See? Glory to Jesus Christ because the internet, people in places that you cannot reach with the gospel are now hearing the gospel in the comfort of their own home. Now, I can't show. I don't want to show his name. So let me do this. Yeah, I don't want to show his name. But I don't want you to think I'm lying. I just got this. So let me do this. Hold on. Let me do this. I won't show his name. I'll just show you that it was an email because I don't want to expose him. All right. You can't see the name, right? All right. Let me put on the screen. Now that you know, I'm not lying. All right. See it? It was sent to me, but I copy and paste it because I don't want to show you his name. Let me remove this and I'll put it on the screen. Okay, watch here. Okay, let me erase his name. Okay. Let me erase his name. Lord Jesus, save his identity and protect me from exposing this man. I'm going to just tell you from what tribe he is. He's from the El Hashemi tribe. That's Muhammad's tribe. Guys, get ready to be shocked. You ready? Praise report. Anthony Rogers, eat your fat lard heart out, you obese cow. Here it is. I had to erase his name. He's from the bloodline of Muhammad. One of Muhammad's descendants. He's from the El Hashimi tribe, which is Muhammad's tribe. There it is. There it is. I was Muslim, but I found Christ. My name is dot, 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 El Hashimi. That's the tribe. All right, El Hashimi. Okay, watch here. Watch here. I am a descendant of Muhammad, and I found the truth. You are one of the reasons as to why, so may God bless you. See that? There you go. You caught it? There you go. You see it? Victor, I've done sessions on what the Catholic Church teaches about Islam. Don't don't start manifesting, Victor, before I cast you out of here. You're kind of too late. I did a session on it. Do you see it? He's from the Al Hashimi tribe. The Al Hashimi tribe. That's Muhammad's tribe. And he says, I'm a descendant of Muhammad. So eat your heart hearts, hearts out, Muslims, a physical descendant of Muhammad, and now. Washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, cleansed of the blood of Muhammad, and he worships the Lord Jesus Christ. See it? You guys rejoicing? Now, with that said, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Here's how you can pray. If you're rejoicing, the Lord is using me. You prayer warriors, pray for me. God, forgive me for my moral failures, for being weak. The Lord purge me. The Lord help me. Help this young lady. We glorify Christ. The Lord set me free from my addictions like food. Give me strict discipline physically, spiritually. Get holier and healthier. The Lord bring my daughters to me. They grow up to be godly women in love with the Lord. They outlive me and the Lord provide for the ministry. Please, if you love me for the sake of the Lord. And the Lord preserve me in his love and not hand me over. In Jesus' name. Because better men of God than me have fallen. Well, we just got this praise report. All right. So there you go. So here, glory to God. This guy just sent it to me on Rumble. Sent it to me on Rumble. Thank you, King Deplorables. I like that. I used to listen to Jesse Lee Peterson. I wish you'd invite me on his program so I can destroy his anti trinitarian blasphemies. Tell him to invite me just for a few weeks. But the anti trinitarian takes didn't sit right with me. Then the Holy Spirit led me to you through a video suggestion. Praise him. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Son. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Now, let's begin the discussion of the video. All right. A lot of reasons to rejoice today. Amen. God is giving us a lot of reasons to rejoice. 
Let's go to the video, shall we? What day is it? Now, how many of you are happy that a physical descendant of Muhammad turned to the Lord Jesus Christ and now washed in the blood of Lord Jesus Christ, cleanse of the blood of Muhammad, adding insult to injury to Muslims? Rejoicing? All right. What day is it? you, me, all of the people. Let's go now to the video. La la la. Let's go to the video. La la la. La 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 He also has another one witnessing the five Jehovah's Witnesses. We'll probably look into that later. So we're gonna make this a main channel for over three months, Lord willing. Even when I'm unbanned on July 27, Lord willing, I have to be careful. I have to be careful. Tread lightly. Who's who's FaceTiming? I'm live, buddy, on Rumble, mister. Go to rumble.com backslash answering Islam now. Now. And then afterwards, we'll talk. All right, God bless you, sir. We'll talk later. All right, sorry. All right, hold on. Let me get, let them send me, the, let me send them the link. Okay, let me send them the link. Hold on, guys. You and me. All of the people. All right, now, this is the video. Now, mister. Now. Who's Halal Hogan? Halal Hogan is my father, Jim. Halal Hogan is my father. A lot of people don't know that my mother was actually in love with a man named Halal Hogan. And he conceived, she conceived me and gave birth to me, but she kept the identity of my father hidden for all these years. And now I finally realized, because I found my birth certificate, that I'm the son of Halal Hogan. I'm going to show you who Halal, Halal Hogan is. Now, here's the video. All right. Well, thank you, Jim, that you think it's beautiful. Now, if you guys don't get it, on Facebook, streamer shows me the comments. So he wants to know who's Halal Hogan. Halal Hogan. Now, I'm going to show you who he is. You ready? All right. I'm going to show you who he is. Okay, I just want you to know, Jim, my mother, sadly, didn't tell me that when my dad left, she was secretly married to Halal Hogan. She had to keep it under wraps. And then somehow he disappeared. No one knows what happened. They think that when he went to Saudi Arabia to make Umrah, he was never found because he was an undercover Christian trying to infiltrate Arabia. And we never heard of him since. Now, we're going to come back to this one. Let me show you who my father is. There's still footage of him out there. Okay? So here he is. This is Halal Hogan. You ready? Let me show you who Halal Hogan is. Here's my father. Thank you, Jim, that you think it's beautiful. Jim, I also have real estate in Nevada. You know, I have a lakefront home to sell if you're interested. Here's my father, Jim. Fighting for the right of every Palestinian. Here he goes. I am a real Arabian. Fight for my life. Fight Let me tell you something, life. brother. My father right Let here. me tell you how you can be like Halal Hogan, brother. And become more Sharia compliant. That's my daddy. This is what you need to do if you want Sharia mania all over you. Not only do you pray five times a day, but you gotta eat your southern Ajwa dates. Yeah, brother. Dunk your fly in your drink, because one of the wings have the disease, and the other one has the antidote. Ooh, yeah. That's something only Allah and his messenger could reveal. Only Allah could do that and make sure you drink your camel urine, especially if your stomach aches and milk it when you take the urine and you take the milk. you got an unbeatable combination, and that's when you're going to see the 24-inch python get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> All right. Now, there's still more footage of my father, Halal Hogan, out there. Not in Arizona, do Las Vegas, California, Michigan. That's where I'm at. Anyway, I, there's still more footage of my father out there. Let's see if I can find some more. Okay. Halal Hogan. 
Here it is. I am a real Arabian fighting for the right of every Palestinian. I am a real like Arabian. I would have fight for my that. life. Fight for my rights. Let me tell you something, brother, about how glorious and majestic Allah truly is. Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days or eight days, depending on which surah you read. That's right, brother. There are no contradictions in the glorious Quran. And after that, he created the billions and billions of Sharia maniacs. And then after it was all said and done, Allah blew the minds of creation away by creating the 24-inch pythons, the very pythons that squeezes the lifeblood out of every kufar, the very pythons that take captive all these beautiful infidel blondie women. Because that's the booty. For Allah and his messenger and all those who do jihad, feast of Allah, what you gonna do? He looks like he was a great man. Too bad I didn't know him. Now, the sad fact is, he thought he was muscular. My poor father didn't know he was an obese cow who thought he was muscular. But that's okay. He was delusional. And he infiltrated Arabia with the name Halal Hogan. So let's watch my dad in honor of my father. And then we're gonna begin. Do once your mania runs wild all over you. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me give you the key to success. FYI, Victor, we don't say LMAO, mister. That that would get you blocked. We say LMBO, laughing Muhammad's butt out off. Don't use the A. Don't be such an ass. All right, go ahead. If you want to live forever, if you want Jannah so you never die, but inherit all those beautiful big-breasted hoories who make my chest look like it's a small, tiny thing in comparison, then here's what you got to do. You got to perform the six pillars of Islam, brother, starting with the first, Shahada. If you say, La ilaha illallah, and Muhammad Rasulullah, then that's the first pillar. And you enter into the fold of Islam, and you become a Sharia maniac. But there's more to it, brother. Because Allah and his messenger expect a lot more if you want to get your hoories <laughs> who make my pythons look like they're little garden snakes, brother. I am a real Arabian. Let's watch fighting for the right of every Palestinian. Very emotional, sentimental. We're almost done. Please, guys, don't tune out. Increase the viewership. This is a very, very sad and touching moment because this is my daddy. So please, let's just watch my daddy. Okay, just let me watch. I want to see my daddy. And my angel, my firstborn, just sent me a message. Good night, Baba. Don't think I forgot you. I love you. So please, guys, can you bear another seven minutes of this? And then we'll begin, I promise. But it's bringing back memories that I don't have of my daddy. I love you, Daddy. Daddy wasn't there, but I love you, Daddy. I love you. All right. I am a real Arabian. Fight for my life. Fight for my rights. Let me tell you something, brother. Let me tell you how you can be like Halal Hogan, brother, and become more Sharia compliant. This is what you need to do if you want Sharia mania all over you. Not only do you pray five times a day, but you got to eat your southern Ajwa dates. Yeah, brother, dunk your fly in your drink because one of the wings has the disease and the other one has the antidote. Ooh, yeah, that's something only Allah and his messenger could reveal. Only Allah could do that and make sure you drink your camel urine, especially if your stomach aches and milk it when you take the urine and you take the milk, you got an unbeatable combination. And that's when you're gonna see the 24 inch pythons get bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. That's so glorious and majestic. Let me tell you about the hoodies of paradise. Ooh, yeah. As my friend Macho would say, ooh, yeah. What or who are the hoodies? They are the firm-breasted whores of paradise. 
Did you know that each one of them, their chest will be larger than my chest? And that is a feat that only Allah can perform. <laughs> Look at this chest, baby. But can you imagine a hoodie with a bigger chest than mine? And you know what's beautiful about those hoodies? Every time you have sex with them, every time that they experience one of the 24-inch pythons, brother, they go back to being virginal again. And that is the miracle of Allah and his messenger. Ha, 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 ha. What you gonna do when the hurry smack you with one of their chest all over you? Now what is Sadaqa? Every money you have left over after paying your bills, brother, you gotta give 2.5% for charitable causes, one of which includes financing the jihadis who fight in the way of Allah. What greater reward can it be than financing someone from attacking the kufar, taking their babes as captives, even married ones? Oh, brother, that's a taste of Jannah on earth, if you ask me, brother. Brother, I swear by Allah, and I swear by the moon, and I swear by the stars, and everything in creation, that when I started drinking that mixture, my guns went from 18 to 24, brother. Talk about a mega drink. Talk about a drink that just makes your muscles blow up. And yes, pun intended, blow up. <laughs> yeah, brother. There's nothing like cavalier. And there's nothing like milk. Especially after. Well, to, an to answer your question, to answer your question, this was purely ad lib. This is purely ad lib. David came with a recorder, recorded me. And no script. It was all from my memory, completely ad lib. Glory to the Father, Holy Spirit, for wiring me in such a way that I'm probably on the spectrum. I'm probably autistic. No script, ad lib, completely from beginning to end. Uthman, you're not saying the truth to your brothers that your mother did muta with the Shia and fathered you bastards, you dumb little bastard. Here you go. Do you eat seven Ajwa dates? If you don't believe me, brother, try it. And then you're going to see Sharia mania run wild over you. I am a real Arabian, fighting for the right of every Palestinian. I am a real Arabian, fight for my life, fight for my right. Well, let me tell you something, brother. There's nothing more beautiful and righteous than Sharia. And yet you got the kufar, the stinking no good kufar, the stinking pig eating kufar, talking about democracy. Well, let me show you why that's foolish, brother. What better than Sharia to tame the woman, brother? And only Sharia, you can beat a rebellious wife if you go the route of democracy then the woman has rights over you. Not only that, brother, but in Sharia, you can have up to four wives and you can divorce them anytime you want by saying talak, 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 three times, brother. In a democratic state, you gotta hire lawyers, you gotta get a judge, and they take you to the cleaners, brother. Not only that, in Sharia societies, I can attack the village. And I can take the woman captive, even married ones. Oh, yeah. Sharia and democracy are two things that don't go hand in hand. And what you're going to do, Kufar, when Sharia comes over you and Sharia mania takes over the world for Allah and his messenger. Tama Sharia maniacs, brother. Almost done. I got something to share My with dad, you, brother. And it's a hey, blood child, brother. Yeah, I know that in the West. You, they say that it's illegal, brother, to marry a six-year-old and to consummate marriage with her when she's nine. But I'm here to tell you, brother, that Allah and his messenger has given us the final command. According to 65 verse 4, brother, a command that existed in eternity. We have the right not only to marry prepubescent girls, but we can divorce them and marry anyone else for that matter. And you know what's beautiful about marrying a prepubescent girl? <laughs> you don't need to take her to the park. Because when you got pythons like these, brother, she can swing on your pythons every night and day with the blessing of Allah and his messenger. What you gonna do, Kufar, when Sharia mania comes for your child, right, and your children?
Wonderful. Tama Sharia Maniacs, brother. Let me tell you how amazing the Quran is. And let me tell you how majestic and powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happens to be, brother. Did you know when you see a shooting star and you want to wish upon it, let me tell you what's taking place, brother. Those shooting stars like my pythons are sent as missiles to attack them dirty jinn. Oh yeah, for you kafar, the jinn are the genie, brother. And you could be dreaming of genie all night, all long. But I'm here to tell you, brother, that when it comes to the shooting stars, they're hurled at the genie like these pythons are hurled at the kufar, brother. I don't care what the kufar signed to say. They may tell you it's impossible that a star can be hurled at an immaterial being. But I'm telling you with Allah and his messenger, all things are possible. What you're going to do, kufar, when a shooting vessel like my python comes running for you? Allah and his messenger, they're wonderful, brother. Love you, Dad. Let me tell you the most amazing part of Hajj, brother. Do you, you know that black Dad, stone? Oh, yeah. I know it's a stone that can neither harm nor hurt you nor benefit you. But guess what's so amazing about it? Allah's messenger went up to it. And as he got near the black stone, he started smooching it, kissing it, rubbing it, brother. And because he's an example for all humanity, Sharia maniacs, you too can smooch that black stone. <laughs> Instead of kissing the python, oh yeah, what better than to kiss and smother the very stone that Allah's messenger smothered with his holy saliva. Alhamdulillah, brother. All praise be to Allah. Praise be Allah. I praise Allah for creating the world's biggest arms, brother. But let me let the Asturia maniacs in on a little secret. Let me tell you how Allah helped me get these pythons to be these huge boulders, brother. Going from 11 inches to 24 inches, brother. Did you know that Allah in his infinite wisdom through his messenger allows us to squeeze the lifeblood to kill every cartoonist who would dare mock and lampoon our beloved messenger by making cartoons mocking the way he looks yes brother let me tell you about my career as a sharia maniac my career as a jihadi when i became a follower of allah and his messenger i embarked on jihad visa vis a law and many a cartoonist had their head squeezed like a pimple by these pythons and the more kufar that I was able to squeeze their heads for lampooning the prophet by mocking him in cartoons, the bigger my pythons got. And so now, brother, when you see Talal Hogan and you see the guns, these guns are ready to rock and roll all over any cartoonist who would dare mock Allah his messenger. Do you want these guns? Do you want to have pythons so that little girls can swing upon? Then you need to get a cartoonist who would dare mock Allah his messenger and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. As a gel, brother. But let me tell you something amazing, brother. The Quran says that Allah has the power to annul, to abrogate verses from his eternal, uncreated speech, brother. Now you tell me, brother, who but Allah can erase a part of his eternal speech and still be majestic and glorious in doing it? But let me say this, brother. There was a scroll, a manuscript, that contained verses on suckling a grown man. Oh yeah, brother, you heard me right. Suckling a grown man. But Allah abrogated it. And what did he do with a scroll? What did he do with that manuscript that contained those commands to breastfeed a grown man, even with a nice beard like mine? He ordered a sheep, brother, and the sheep ate the copy with the verses. And those verses are long gone, never to be discovered by any of the kufar. <laughs> what you gonna do, kufar, when Allah decides to abrogate you?
done. Wonderful. Rasulullah is amazing, brother. He truly is a mercy unto mankind. And let me show you one of the great mercies that he bestowed on his followers, brother. Did you know that Allah and his messenger allows the violation or the breaking or the annulling of your oaths? <laughs> All right. Now, if you follow the script, this was part of David Wood's Islamicize Me series where I play Halal Hogan talking about facts about Islam. So that was me playing Halal Hogan talking about facts of Islam. It was part of the Islamicize Me series. You can still find it. I played two characters. I also played the Mad Sheikh. The impersonation of the Mad Sheikh was so impressive that when Jamila White attacked David Wood and company for doing the series, Lampooning Islam. He actually praised my performance and was impressed. So, but for those of you who may not know, that was my daddy. That was my daddy. That's the man that birthed me, Jim. Jim, that was my daddy. I never got to see him. I only saw the videos. The only thing is my daddy thought he was muscular, but he was very heavy. But that's okay. My daddy can be delusional. I love you, daddy. Daddy, I love you. I wait, can't wait to see you in heaven, daddy. Mommy told you, told me you're a Christian, pretend to be Muslim. Thank you, daddy. Thank you. I'll live up to your legacy, man. I love you, man. <laughs> now, do you guys want me to show you the clip where I played? Uh, where. I played the Mad Chef, just one clip, and we'll get into it. Thank you, brother. To call me Bruce Lee is a compliment when it comes to Christianity, obviously, because you're comparing me and my skills as an apologist by the grace of God to his skills as a fighter. Sadly, as a human being, he was far from an example. May the Lord save me from being that way. But now let me show you where I played the Mad Chef. Here it is. Islamicize me. Mad Sheikh. Let me show you the blue the bloopers. This one will work. So it goes here, right here. And you'll see it. So I won't play, but you can find do Islamicize me, Mad Sheikh. But here I'll do the bloopers right here. That was me when I was still very heavy. Thank the Lord. I'm losing weight. I pray I keep it up. Oh, that's David Wood. That's Volcab Malone. That's John. What do you mean, McCray? So let's look at the bloopers. They couldn't keep a straight face. That's me, the mad Sheikh. Watch them bust out laughing, especially David Wood. Here you go. This is the creation of Allah. Even Allah's messenger, even Allah's messenger, did not have beautiful toes like me. Good, this one too, brother. He made sure I had both. Stop for Allah, Hey, did you guys tell Sam about the Hebrew Israelites? Did you tell him about when we the encounter with the Hebrew Israelites? Oh no, we didn't tell you that. We went out full jihadi and went, went out with a, with, a, with a cell of Hebrew Israelites and challenged them, saying, Muhammad was right. How can you say so he's not? When did you guys do this? This one minute ago, on right Saturday, when they go out. Yeah, in Phoenix. Uh, it was John's in Phoenix. Sorry, and then ask uh, any questions. Okay, wider. Let me know when I'm ready. Oh, yeah, I'm ready now. Can I comment? It's okay. <clears throat> so you see why prayer at the start of the day is important because even shaitan when he hears the call to the adhan he farts he blows wind and he takes off running this is the power of the salah ya brothers in islam now with that said i open the floor to questions yes yaqi uh yes sheikh uh we see peaceful verses in the quran and we see violent verses in the Quran. And how do we reconcile these? Are these a contradiction? What a beautiful question, brother. Because in this question, you will see the hikmah, the wisdom of Allah and his messenger. The reason why you have peaceful verse, verses or ayat in the Quran is because our prophet, our beloved prophet, Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the beginning stages, he was outnumbered by the... You see vocab here, he's laughing, that's vocab. The kufar. And using the hikmah that Allah Azza wa 
gave to him. David here, so he preached a message of stop. <laughs> <laughs> that was our fault, dude. That was totally our fault. There you go. So you got it. That was me, Mad Chef. So let me get you the link. That was it. Now, because can you believe this? Because of my performance, did you? Can you believe it? Because of my performance as a Mad Chef and as Halal Hogan, I'm listed as an actor. Here it is. I'm listed as an actor. You think I'm lying? Here, let me show you. I gave you the links. Let me show you. You go to Google, put Sam Shimon actor. Sam Shimon actor right here and here i am boom i pop up where there i go someone tell me hey you know you're listed as an actor so is david wood i go what right here imdb imdb sam shimon actor sam shimon is known for islamicize me 2018 see that there you go so there you go. Is it God has a sense of humor. I wanted to be a Hollywood star. Believe it or not, in the 90s, when I used to be a bodybuilder kickboxer, I actually thought I'd become the first Assyrian superstar, make it in Hollywood. I'd become an actor and star and make Assyrians famous. God has a sense of humor. The Lord was using all this to prepare me for ministry. So now that said, now we're ready. Now we're ready to go into the topic. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a... Friday night, some of you, it's Saturday. For some of you, it's Saturday, July 20th. And I'll tell you why it's significant in a minute. Now let's go to the video. Yes, child of Adam, this is Sam. Do you need me to bring you up? I don't know. You're going to have to wait because we're talking about JWs. So unless you want to ask me questions, I don't know. I may take you. I may not. We'll see. All right. Let's go to the clip. Here it is, Joe Witness. Here you're going to learn how not to witness and how to witness. How not to witness and how to witness. All right, here you go. All right, here we go. It's a beautiful morning. Was it really God's wish to kill Abraham's elder son? Why Isaac needed to be punished? He's the son of God. Okay, let me go to where he talks to them. Right here. Let's start here. Right here. We're going to start here. Okay, let's go here. Okay, watch. You're going to learn from this young man how not to witness and how to witness. So let's go here. Okay, let's go. Hello, how are you all? Right. Doing good? You? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can I see. know. I was just looking at you. Jesus is king. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of, you know, that's what we're featuring the, the kingdom that Jesus taught us to pray for, yeah. Matthew 6, 9, and 10. And so I'm talking about just how much we long for that kingdom. Yeah, yeah. And its effects to be here completely on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. So I don't know if that's something you've ever taken a look at, but you're, you're welcome to. His kingdom, it. you know, your kingdom come, your will yeah, be done on earth exactly. as it is in heaven. Yeah. Uh, then he said to his disciples, the kingdom is within you. Um, even at that, at that time, which would kind of be like the Holy Spirit coming, and then being inside of us, uh, his kingdom. And then he told people, um, you know, tell them the kingdom of God has come near to them. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Um, so that's like the, kind of like the characteristics of the- This man's gonna get involved. They're gonna talk about the Trinity. You're gonna learn from this young man how not to witness, how to witness. He sounds like a modalist, but when I found out that he actually is invited to preach at Trinitarian churches. So he's supposed to be a Trinitarian, but he sounds like a modalist. And you're going to see the confusion on his part and on his part. And so you're going to learn how to witness, how not to witness. So, but pay attention. The kingdom of God, you know, like in heaven, it says there's no more uh, death. There's no more sorrow. There's no more crying. Revelation 21. Um, yeah. No, no, no more pain, stuff yeah. like that. So like God's, yeah, God's kingdom, like how there's no sickness and disease and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that's what Jesus was kind of revealing was he preached the kingdom of God. Yeah. And then, you know, he would like cleanse the lepers, give the blind their sight, the yeah. mute their speech, the deaf their hearing, right, so paralytics. Like, you know, you think about it. This is um, go, approaching a campaign year and a lot of, you know, candidates are trying to show what they're going to do, what they're going to do for government. So the three and a half years of Jesus ministry, he always pointed to God's kingdom as being the permanent solution 
for the things that they were suffering. And then he demonstrated by those miracles, Be the patient. power, you know, that God given power that he could, he could even raise the dead. Yeah. How awesome is that? And, yeah. so, and then he gave that assignment to his apostles too. And then today is the same kingdom that we're talking about that again, will bring permanent solutions to all of mankind's problems. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's yeah, a he's... side note. I want you to understand because they're so programmed by the society because it's a cult and so controlled by them that they are told they have to do this pioneer work of going out there and spreading the message of Jehovah's kingdom. And many of them are professionals. Like I met a pediatrician who owned his own medical office who would go out there, even in freezing cold, standing out there with his wife, trying to win people to the Jehovah witness cult because they believe that the more they do for Jehovah, the better chance they have for Jehovah. Let's say they die. Just let me give you a little, some of their beliefs. Now there are Jehovah's witnesses here who will confirm what I'm about to say in Jehovah witness teaching. When you die, you cease to exist. Adventists and seven day Adventists and Jehovah's witnesses are very similar. So you guys want me to go a little in depth, right? You're here to learn. Thank the Lord. Our numbers are increasing on Rumble. We need to increase this. Okay. Adventists, Seventh-day Adventists and Jehovah's Witnesses, their beliefs are very similar because many people don't know. If you ever study Charles Taze Russell, who founded the Jehovah's Witnesses, he was actually influenced by the Adventists, Millerites, William Miller and his followers. And he had lost his faith, but because of the Adventists, his faith was restored. This is why the original Adventists were like Joe's Witnesses. The original Adventists were like Joe's Witnesses. What do I mean? The original Adventists believed that Christ is not uncreated. They didn't believe in the Trinity. They believed like Arius, only the Father is uncreated. And he brought the Son into existence before all other <clears throat> creatures. So that's where Charles Tays Russell got this from. They also believe that when you die, you cease to be conscious. And they believe that hell is not everlasting. You'll be wiped out of existence. That's where Charles Tays Russell got the teaching. And like Charles Tays Russell, they would assign dates for the return of Christ physically. When those dates didn't pan out, they had to then reinterpret their mistakes. Now, another thing that the original Adventists taught was that Christ is the Archangel Michael. Sound familiar? This is why one of the best YouTube channels demolishing Seventh-day Adventists is our brother Miles' channel, Answering Adventism. And by the way, you owe it to yourselves to go watch the two-parter I did with him. They're here now, but go to channel, show them love, subscribe, and support, and like the videos, where we demolish their false demonic doctrine of soul sleep, or that when you die, you cease to be conscious. And they're very unorthodox views of the Trinity. I was on yesterday, so on my channel, but go there and support and our brother. He's, by the way, he's reading the early church fathers. He's on a journey too. Okay, remember my words. I want you to hear. Avery and Miles won't remain Protestants for too long. He was quoting, right, St. Gregory on the soul. He's been eating up the early church fathers. That means in time, Miles will end up leaving. What? Remember my words. So if you go here, you're on YouTube. This is why don't assume, right? Don't assume. Let me go here. That what happened? He's the only. He's what happened, dude? dude? Hold on. That these brothers, right, have arrived. No. So you go here. This is his YouTube channel. He was quoting St. Gregory on the soul yesterday. Here's the link to his channel, Support the Brother. He does a wonderful job of demolishing, demolishing, Lord willing in time, Gary Fox, demolishing Seventh-day Adventists and their heretical teaching. So go support the brother. So Adventists are virtually identical to Joe's Witnesses. Seven-day Adventists, due to the influence of Ellen G. White and others, started accepting a more Trinitarian view of the Godhead, but not 
orthodox enough. And there's now a spreading movement among Adventists calling the Seventh-day Adventists to the original beliefs of the original Adventists, the Millerites, and telling them they need to repent of the Trinity and go back to their roots. And their roots are no older than the 19th century, 1800s. You guys aware of this? Are you guys aware of this or no? So this is why Seventh-day Adventists, Adventists, the original ones, and the ones today who are not Trinitarians and Jehovah's Witnesses are so similar. Exactly, militant wings. Yep. One of the leading voices calling Adventists back to the original beliefs, to the roots of the original Adventists, the Millerites, is Nadir or Nadir Mansur, uh, anti-Trinitarian heretic, Bible butcher. And I actually told Miles, contact him, because I'll take him on your stream or go to his stream and demolish him and his lies and blasphemies. I guess he never accepted the challenge. So keep that in mind. This is where Joe's Witnesses get their teaching from, from the Millerites who are the Adventists. Now, the Joe's Witnesses believe, let's go back here, because you understand and appreciate. I'm going to give you my number one. Shut up. You need attention? Go find it somewhere else. All right. Okay. The Joe's Witnesses believe, let's go to two minute, 55 second mark, that when you die, you cease to exist. When you die, you cease to exist, okay? So you are simply a memory in Jehovah's mind. Now, when Armageddon comes, I need you to understand what they believe. They believe Jesus will not return physically to the earth, but from heaven, he will destroy the kingdoms of the world at Armageddon and then wipe out the wicked and the righteous Jehovah's Witnesses will be preserved and those faithful witnesses that died, who are not part of the 144,000, will be recreated and they will live on earth for a thousand years. And many people who had never received the truth will also be recreated. And during the thousand year reign, Joe's witnesses will then teach them about Jehovah. And during that time, they'll be given a chance to believe. But if they don't, they'll be wiped out. This is what they believe. Do you guys know that? So they don't even believe in a resurrection. Joe's Witnesses don't believe in a resurrection. Because what is a resurrection for us? My soul, spirit leaves my body. My body deteriorates, but I'm still alive, my soul and spirit. Then Jesus Almighty, who produced that body in my mother's womb, will then reconstruct that same body, but now with a difference. He'll remove the stain of sin. I will then enter that body, and that body will be made immortal. They don't believe that. They believe when you die, you cease to exist. She's going to say, you are a soul. So your soul ceases to be. You only exist as a memory in Jehovah's mind. And then Jehovah will recreate you because your soul doesn't exist anymore. You're wiped out of existence. That's what they believe. Did you know that? You're wiped out of existence. I don't know if you know that. Right? Yep, Harley, Harless. Joe's Witnesses believe only the 144,000 anointing class will be born again as spirit creatures reigning with Jesus in heaven. Now, let me shock you a little more about what they believe about Christ. Now, if you've been following me for a while, then you know this already. These are things I've discussed. They don't believe Jesus was physically resurrected. If you ask a Jehovah Witness, I need you to test me on this and don't take my word for it. Amen, Juanita. God bless all of you who are Orthodox and Catholic. May the Lord bring us all together and the Protestants in the fullness of the truth. But the Lord is merciful. He has true believers in all these major branches of Christianity. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Anyway, with that said, let's, let's focus. They don't believe Jesus Christ was raised physically. They don't believe that. Let me tell you what they believe. When the man Jesus died, his body was pretty much wiped out of existence. The physical body of Jesus was wiped out of existence. So that man Jesus was wiped out of existence. 
And the Archangel Michael was recreated with the memories of Jesus. So they don't believe Jesus exists anymore. You can call him Jesus, but he's not Jesus because he's not the man Jesus. He's the Archangel Michael, a spirit creature. The humanity's gone. Do you know that? No, they don't. No, Pojo, they don't. I'm not lying. Ask them. The human Jesus is, in fact, Charles Taze Russell says, the man Jesus is dead. He's gone. So the man has been wiped out of existence. He does not exist because they believe that the Archangel Michael ceased to be and his life force, his life energy was then transferred into the womb of Mary. Mary conceived a human, a male who's only human, and he had the life force of Michael, but he was only a man with the life force. And you know how they teach, guys? You want me to go a little deeper? You guys want me to go a little deeper? They believe that the man, Jesus, was only human, not an angelic human. He had that life force of Michael, whatever that means, but Michael didn't exist anymore, right? <clears throat> life force was put into the child, that male, that was being conceived in the blessed virgin's womb and that while jesus was still young he did not know that at one time there was this michael that existed in heaven and somehow he is him and related to him even though in reality he's not you know what they believe i'm not lying to you get read their book the greatest man Whoever lived. It's a book they have on their site. They go, it was at the baptism when the heavens opened and the spirit came on him that then Jesus remembered Michael in heaven who existed and somehow realized he is somehow connected to Michael. Up until that point, he didn't know about it. It wasn't until the baptism that it was made known to him. You see how convoluted the teaching is? You see how convoluted the teaching is? You want me there? So somehow Jesus at the baptism was awoken to the memories of Michael who existed, but that life force was not transmitted to him. So somehow he realized, wow, there's some continuity between me and Michael. Even though no, he's not Michael because he's only a man. And Michael did not exist anymore. Then when the man Jesus was wiped out, Michael was recreated with the memories of Jesus. What, Moshi, they have no verses, dude. No, Michael Lazarus. It's Michael who's the word, not Jesus. Now, notice what Lazarus asked me. Very good question. Let me share it on screen. No, there was no Jesus that existed, right, before the creation of the heavens and the earth. Michael existed. He's the word. But Michael ceased to be the man Jesus was created with the life force of Michael. And the man Jesus was wiped out. So it's now the archangel Michael with the memories of Jesus. How does that work? I have no idea. So it's Michael who's the word, not Jesus. Michael who's the word, not Jesus. You know that? But they will call him Jesus for convenience sake. If you say, well, why do you call him Jesus? Well, because he's still called Jesus. Why? To show there's some continuity and connection. But is the man Jesus alive? No. Is the man still alive? No. So that man. That physical male with a physical body wiped out, yes. So who is now alive? Michael was recreated, but he has the memories of Jesus to show there's some connection. Yep. So how do they, how's, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand how then is there any continuity between Michael and Jesus? Because you're telling me when one exists, the other doesn't. When Michael exists, there is no human Jesus. When the human Jesus exists, there is no Michael. No, they don't believe Jesus rose the way you and I believe. They believe resurrection is recreation. Ech, 
bigger, understand what they believe. This is why one thing you need to learn. No, the dove came and reminded Jesus that implanted in him was the life force of Michael. So the dove came, the spirit came, because remember what they teach? The life force of Michael was put in the child in the womb of Mary. What does that mean? I don't know. What does that mean is life force? He didn't exist anymore. So what life force? I don't even know that I don't even think they know what they 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 believe. So if you ask them, what does that mean? I I'd be shocked if they can tell you what that means. What do you mean life force? So was he Michael when he became flesh? No. Was he an angelic human when he became flesh? No. Did Michael exist? No. The man Jesus existed with the life force of Michael. And so the Holy Spirit came and opened Jesus' subconscious mind to be aware of that life force in him. Oh, wow. So he sees then that Michael was there with the Father, and somehow he's connected to him. But you can't say they're the same because he's not Michael anymore. What the hell does that mean? I don't know. Yes, blue. That's what they believe. Yes, Blue, that's what they believe. So here's one rule of thumb when you're witnessing. You guys got to pay attention. One rule of thumb when you're witnessing. Rule of thumb. Do not assume that people are using words with the same understanding definition that you do. See, they'll talk about the resurrection of Christ, and you're thinking, oh, they believe it. No. Be a sharp student of the Bible, a sharp apologist. Ask questions. What do you mean? When you say the resurrection of Christ, what do you mean? See, this is where we drop the ball, let him get away with murder. We, we, we say, hey, Christ rose from the dead. They go, yeah, we believe that. Oh, really? Okay. No, you don't believe that. Because say, what do you mean resurrection? That Christ's physical body <clears throat> was that raised? And made immortal? No. When the dead die, are they wiped out of existence? Yes. Their soul wiped out of existence. So it's not a resurrection. It's a recreation. You ever want me there? It's a recreation. So this is what they believe. They believe you cease to exist. So this is why they work and strive. Because they want to be recreated if they die. So now let's say this man dies this year. He now ceases to exist. He has no consciousness. But he's doing this with the hopes that when Armageddon comes and the millennial reign begins, Jehovah will then recreate him and then he'll appear. But it's a recreation. It's not really him. It's him be in, a, in a new, new body and a new mind and a new soul right because we believe our soul spirits continue they're not wiped out they continue our bodies return to dust but then the lord will resurrect and restore those bodies and it is our soul spirits that animate our bodies and give us our unique personalities so there's a continuity right they don't believe that they don't believe that So that's what they're striving for. They're striving for Jehovah to recreate the dead, faithful witnesses. So now watch their scheme. No, when they are recreated, Yana, they will be given the memories of their past life. That's the thing. Jehovah will then put those memories of their life that they had when they live. Even though they're now recreated. So it's a new soul, new body, a new him or her, but with the memories. Oh, wow. I'm him, I'm back. Anyway, I don't know. How does that work? I don't know, man. I mean, how do you explain it? I have no idea. So I'm scratching my head. Okay, so. Okay. And uh, how does that, how's that me? Is it really me? Yeah, sci-fi, right? So what do they fear? They fear hell. Now, what's hell for them? You guys want to know? Can I go a little deeper? Are you still benefiting from this? Now, if you want your hearts to break, 
the great majority of converts to the Catholic Church are Catholics. In fact, you'll find many kingdom halls where they have only Spanish services for all the thousands of Hispanic Latinos, Latinas that became Jehovah's Witnesses who were born Catholics. Do you know that? Yeah, I met them. Because they were poorly catechized. Now, here's what they believe. All right, so, okay, so, I'm wiped out of existence, but I was a faithful Jehovah Witness. Armageddon comes, wicked are destroyed, then Jehovah will recreate me, quote unquote, resurrect me. The memories I had when I was conscious will be implied. Oh, wow. Jehovah recreated me. Thank you, Jehovah. Now, they also believe that many people who never heard a clear witness, never heard a clear witness of who God is, will be given a second chance. They'll be recreated to live in the millennial reign for a thousand years. And those faithful Jehovah witnesses who survived Armageddon or were recreated will teach them. But you have free will during the thousand years. So if you, let's say, were a Buddhist, you're now recreated. And now I, Jehovah Witness, will be teaching you through a thousand years. If you reject, that's when, if you die, you'll be wiped out of existence. Because Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you, hell is not fire. It's not punishment. Hell is being wiped out of existence without ever being resurrected. They believe that three people are already experiencing hell. Let me explain again. Hell for them means being wiped out of existence without the hope of, quote unquote, resurrection. You're wiped out. That's it. Jehovah will not recreate you. They actually believe that right now there are three individuals who have experienced hell, meaning wiped out of existence and will not be recreated. Can anyone guess who they are? They will tell you we know of three. Three. Three who have experienced hell. What is hell? Being wiped out of existence without hope of resurrection. Does anyone know who? Yeah, that's what they believe, Joe. Yeah, you got to ask. You're bringing up verses and bring it to them. Ask them. That's why you should go witness to them. They don't believe Jesus descended to hell, King. King deplorables, they'll tell you the word hell is Hades in Greek. Hades is the Greek word for Sheol in Hebrew means the grave. Judas is one. Judas has experienced hell. He'll never be recreated. And the other two, Adam and Eve, Isaac got it. They believe Adam and Eve were damned to hell. He, they were not forgiven. So when they died, they were wiped out of existence and never be recreated. And Judas is the third. Not Joseph Smith. That was Mormonism, Lazarus. Joseph Smith started the Mormon church. It was Charles Taze Russell. So in their belief, no, Satan is still alive according to the Bible. Not yet. In their belief, Adam and Eve have experienced hell. They were not forgiven. So, so did Judas. Wiped out of existence, they will not be resurrected. So now let's finish it so we can hear this. Now, let's say you're a faithful Jehovah Witness. You've been wiped out of existence. Then you're recreated, resurrected. But do you know what they also believe? Did you know that during the thousand years after being resurrected, you can drop the ball and fail and turn away from Jehovah and they be wiped out of existence and experience hell. So that means you have 1,000 more years to prove faithful, or you can be wiped out of existence. That's what they believe. That's what their religion teaches. Talk about a depressing religion, huh? Charles Taze Russell. What Ray do? What are you thinking, Ray Charles? What are you thinking about Ray Charles for, dude? Charles Taze Russell, dude. All right. Now let's, with that said, let's hear the rest of this.
that's you know yeah he's the only he's the only solution exactly, jesus exactly. yeah uh no not not news i i have like a youtube channel okay. um but that's yeah. main it but i guess good news but not the news like abc you know <laughs> news stuff like that that's funny. what's the main the main difference between I guess Jehovah's Witness, is it considered Christianity or yes, because, yes. Christianity? Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we follow Christ as best we can. Yeah. You know what we do? What we, do, we, do we follow Christ and we're, uh, uh, we, uh, we, are, we are Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, the, there, there, are, there are probably a number of differences. Mm -hmm. number of differences but we, are, we consider ourselves Christians. Yeah, yeah. Do you all believe that he's the son of God? Yes. Okay, got you. That he's like the Messiah, the Christ, right, exactly. all that, yeah. but not that he was God. So you, so I you, guess so that's you, where you do have so you do have some knowledge of us, yes, indeed. Uh, a little bit. I'll show you here. Yeah, you go. I don't know what that's. JW.org. Yeah, JW.org. Right. You already knew about it. Yeah. You already knew about it. Okay. So, so you. Well, it's a, it's right there. Okay. Well, yeah. Right. Well, well. <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. But but the this is our official site, and it has. It has all the, our information and beliefs, and we we steer people to it now. This is the New World Translation. Then you have uh, Bind in American Standard King James. Yeah, you know it has it has yeah, different translations of it. Do y'all read like the the KJV, the King James version, or what? Yeah, well, what do you mainly well, read? We know mainly we read the, this is called the NWT. The English NWT is called New World Translation, made by Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay, gotcha. But, but we but uh, until the early 50s, we used the King James and the yeah. American Standard. I'm curious in, in yeah. your Bob. And the mission, which I actually showed you and confirmed in previous sessions. Until the 1950s, we used the King James Version. Did you hear it? He just admitted. That's a fact. I've documented from their sources. And I have a series of articles on my blog quoting them, praising King James, and then showing you how to use a King James Bible against them. And I'll show you those articles in a minute. But then they realized the King James Bible was destroying them. They had to come up with their own perversion called the New World Translation. Bible, what Isaiah 42. Yeah, yeah, it's talking about Jesus. Look, my servant on whom I uh, keep fast hold, my chosen one whom my soul has approved, I have put my spirit in him. Justice to the nations is what will bring forth. So this is where this young man confused me. I went and checked. He does teach at a Trinitarian church, so he's not a modalist. But he's so uninformed about the Trinity, he's going to sound like a modalist. So he just quotes Isaiah 42, 1, where the father says, this is my servant about Jesus, whom I love, right? Whom my soul delights in, I put my spirit on him. And then he's going to talk about God having a soul, God having a spirit, and I don't know, Jesus' servant. And he's going to then liken it to himself having a soul, spirit, and body. Modalism. But he's not a modalist. Because he teaches at a Trinitarian church. You understand what that means, guys? This is another lesson. Don't assume that people who go to solid churches are catechized properly to know what they're supposed to believe. You can have a true church and the people ignorant of what their own church teaches because the priests, bishops, whoever they are, are not catechizing them. They're dropping the ball. If you take a survey, and I want you guys to prove me wrong, take a survey, go to your church, and just ask the Catholics, Orthodox, or if you're evangelical, a, explain the Trinity to me. And who is Jesus? And who is the Father? Who is the Spirit? How are they three in one? If they don't end up sounding like modalists or tritheists, I'll be shocked because they're poorly catechized. Now watch. Verses like that, like this is the, the Lord actually speaking, but it says my soul. Mm -hmm. And then it also says my spirit. Mm -hmm. And then it's actually talking about. What does my soul and spirit mean? What is this guy talking? So there are four persons now, soul, spirit, God, and Messiah. Uh, the guy baffled me. That's why I wanted to do this to show you how not to witness and how to witness. My servant whom, you know, uh, my, my chosen one. So right there we see father, son and Holy Spirit. Um, and there, there's actually several places even in um, like Psalms and stuff where God refers to my soul, um, speaking of his own soul. So that's kind of what really helped me because for a long time, you know, people talk about the Trinity, which I know is not in the Bible, um, but Father, Son, Holy Spirit, even that. 
when he said Trinidad not in the bill. That's where he caught me off guard as the immortalist. But what he meant was the word Trinity is not in the Bible because he knows that's what they're going to say. Well, Trinity is not in the Bible. But Father, Son, and Spirit are. So let's just focus on that because I did verify. He does teach at a Trinitarian church. That concept, like scripturally, um, it was hard for me to grasp it. But then when I when I recognized the Bible says that we're spirit, body and soul. Right. So we have a body, you know, uh, that's the earthly tent. It's just temporary. Um, and then we have eternal, you know, inside of us. Um, but just as we're like three parts, um, spirit, body and soul. And may just like we're three parts spirit. I swore I thought he was a modalist. And again, guys, I went now unless the Trinitarian Church is allowing modalists to come and teach. He's invited to teach. At a Trinitarian church. I went to their website, Protestant. They go, we worship God as Trinity, three eternal distinct persons. But notice he's saying, like I'm three parts, God is three parts. Wow. Made in the image of God, it actually says that he's three parts, but one. Three like three like for you, this, this, just because. This, this, I've, this I've heard before. I'm aware of this. Yeah. You know, but you know, it came in with the Nicene Creed, like 300. It, and there you go again. You guys see it, right? This guy's one of their elders, obviously. And the Nicene Creed, Nicene Creed. It wasn't until the Council of Nicaea, 325 AD, where the church came up with the Trinity. So what he's trying to argue is the Trinity was only concocted at Nicaea in the year 325 AD. Did you catch it? Learn, learn from the mistakes of this man. And learn what they're going to say and be prepared. It was before that. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't settled because it's an. Like you said, Trinity's not in the Bible. Well, that just yeah. that word. I know Trinity is not in the Bible, but, but it is. But it is. The word Trinity is not in the Bible, so he's not trying to deny Trinity, but he doesn't know how to articulate it. it. Is the belief, and you would think that if, if God wanted to be known as a standard belief, yeah, it would be in the Bible. You see these people in Pakistan right now, over 84% of Pakistan lacks clean water at this current moment. I mean, that's a pretty... Well, pretty Isaiah 42, how, how would you explain, Isaiah, that scripture that was just... Because that, that's even the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Well, okay, well, how would you explain that verse? Well, like, God saying, my soul, my spirit, and even think about this. talking about it. God said, my soul, my spirit. How is that the Trinity? Because notice, God has a soul. He has a spirit. Just like I have a soul, I have a spirit. So are you saying that God has a body? That body is Jesus? Yeah, that's modalism, man. But I don't get it. Uh, the guy really baffled me, this young man. The son, the chosen Jesus one. got resurrected. And, and he meets Mary and Martha you know, after the resurrection. And they grab him. And he says, stop clinging to me. I've not yet ascended to my God and your God. Now, God don't have a God. Yeah. So he's not God. God don't have you. See? I've answered that 10 billion times on my YouTube channel and my articles. But if you want, I can answer that as well. If we have time today, Lord willing. But I want you to see the typical arguments. You who are servants of the true God, the Trinity, who are students of the Bible, who love the Bible and know the God of Bible is triune and Jesus is God in the flesh. The Lord Jesus, not the Father, not the Spirit, one with them in nature, became flesh from the Holy Virgin. He's still God in flesh. You need to be prepared. This is the script you're seeing. So from this, you're learning. All right, these are their arguments. I need to be prepared. And here are the things I'm not going to say. Learn from this young man's mistake. We don't say God is three parts. See, my soul, my spirit, like me, soul, spirit, and body. What are you talking about? Right, but now listen. So John 20, 17, God has a God? No, God doesn't have a God. Jesus can't be God. Ah. See what I'm Wait, where, where, where do you say that? It'll take me a second to find it. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Hey, please quit filming me. No, not is that uh, John 20. John 20? What verse is it? Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. John 20, verse But be on your way to my brothers and say that I'm ascending to my Father and to my God and to your God. What's King James say there? Uh, this is NKJV. I'm ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. God don't have a God. Yeah. But, so, so, no, no. Yeah, if God, God, so here, Jesus God was referring to God in the second person. I'm going to ascend to my God. He didn't say, you know, he didn't say, I am God. He said, I'm, get, I'm going to God. Yeah. God didn't have a God. God didn't have a God. Now, here's what's ironic. You want to laugh, guys? You guys want to laugh? All right. If you ask him, 
if you ask him, is Jesus a God? Yes, he's a lower case G God, a God. So you said God doesn't have a God, but you believe Jesus is a God, right? So you have a God who has a God over him. So you believe in multiple gods. Then they'll honestly say, yes, we do. Because they don't believe the Bible teaches the monotheism that many Christians believe it does. They believe that God has created spirit creatures and endowed them with abilities and wisdom that make them God-like. So they are gods in a lesser sense, created, finite, temporal, and all their abilities, their potencies come from the one true God, but the Father alone is the uncreated almighty God. Now, one more thing. Yeah, our Monga Enterprises, just help me help you stay focused on me, right? Don't bring up like Matthew 20. That's not the first reference. One more thing about their belief. They don't believe Jehovah God the Father is omnipresent in the sense that they believe that Jehovah God the Father has a location. And the way he becomes aware of what takes place in the earth is by sending forth his active force, Holy Spirit. Because to them, the Holy Spirit is not a person, but Jehovah's active force, like his power. And because his active force can fill the earth, by that active force, Jehovah becomes aware of what takes place on earth. All right? Just want you to know that. Because they believe Jehovah God the Father has a body, a spirit body, but a body. Are you with me there? Are you learning this? May the Lord correct all my errors and give me perfect recall of all the facts for the glory of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Are you with me there? So how is he aware of all things? Because he sends forth Holy Spirit, meaning his active force. The Holy Spirit is not a person. It is Jehovah's, let's say, energy that it fills the earth. And because of his energy, he's able to realize what's taking place. Another Jehovah Witness doctrine. Another Jehovah Witness doctrine. They believe that Jehovah has selective foreknowledge. What does that mean? Selective foreknowledge means Jehovah chooses not to know everything. So that Jehovah knows whatever can possibly happen, but he chooses not to know what will happen until it happens. Do you know that? They call it selective foreknowledge. You with me there? Selective foreknowledge. You guys understand what I'm getting at before I move on to the next point? Before I move on to the next point? Jehovah as a spirit body. So it's his active force, Holy Spirit, that fills the earth. And by means of that active force, he's aware of what takes place. But he himself is not omnipresent because they don't even know what omnipresence means in the theological sense. And he has selective foreknowledge. Selective foreknowledge. So he chooses not to know all things. You get it? That's their belief. So keep that in mind, what they believe about Jehovah. So their Jehovah, the Father, is not your Father. Their Jesus is not your Jesus. Their spirit is not your, your spirit. Their gospel is not your gospel. That's 2 Corinthians 11, 1 of 4. That someone comes and preaches another Jesus from the one we preach, or you receive a different spirit from the one you receive, or a different gospel, you put up with it easily. And that's the serpent trying to seduce you and mislead you. They have a different father from the one we believe in, a different Jesus, a different spirit, a different gospel. And Paul warned about such people in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 1 of 4. And he says that they will be inspired by Satan as ministers of righteousness, apostles of Christ, but they're deceived and deceiving because Satan appears as an angel light to deceive them. Everyone got it? 2 Corinthians 11, verses 1 of 4. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 and 15. So now let's finish this. It's just a thought. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's, it's a good thought. I think uh, he's, he's saying, you know, my father and your father. And then he's saying my God and your God. But that's not four different not four different things there. He's, he's referring, it's kind of like back to back. Mm -hmm. I'm ascending to my father and your father, okay. like saying basically 
um, basically now no, no, you're no, also no, no, children. No, 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 you you're also good? there's nobody good but God. Yeah. Did you see yeah, his the father. Because he okay. he was he said. Did you catch the other argument? There's no one good but God. See, this is where Muslims are getting their arguments. Typical Joe Witness arguments. See John 20, 17. My father, my God. See, Jesus has a God. God doesn't have a God. Muslims use this. Or Mark 10, 17, 18. Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? There's none good but God alone. Do you see it's the same script across the board? Same arguments by Joe's witnesses, Muslims, various types of Arians. Arians are those who believe that God created Jesus first as spirit being, a spirit creature. So he's not uncreated. He's not equal to the Father. Same arguments of Unitarians. Same. Are you see? So when you learn how to destroy the objections against the Trinity, you learn how to destroy all these satanic cults and worldviews. So again, learn from the Christian man how not to argue. And maybe I'll do a part two tomorrow, Lord willing. But I just wanted to whet your appetite today. Sent his his son, so Jesus in the bodily form. And Jesus was fulfilling all righteousness in the human. So his answer is, well, Jesus said that well, there's none good but God alone. Because God sent for us his son in bodily form. And Jesus came to fulfill all righteousness. So he humbled himself. That's what he's saying. In, in the human flesh. That, that's why when he said to John the Baptist, uh, he said, John the Baptist was like, no, 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 I'm not going to baptize you. And then uh, he said, it's necessary for us to fulfill all righteousness. Oh, my, my God, my God, why, why have you forsaken me? You notice what right. he did again? What, who is he talking to himself? Did you notice? He again quotes verses where Jesus talks about having a God. All right, my God and your God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now watch what he says. Remember, he's supposedly refuting the Trinity. Listen to the Joe Witness. For us to fulfill all righteousness. Oh, my, my God, my God, why, why have you forsaken me? Right. What, who is he talking to himself? No, well, no, he's, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, third yeah, part. Get my drift. Yeah. Did you catch it? Here's an elder. I believe he's an elder, or at least someone who knows Joe's witnesses, who argues, wait, Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So who's he talking to himself? If Jesus is God, is he talking to himself? Now, again, let me hammer the do's and don'ts of evangelism. Please listen. Number one. Don't assume that your opponent defines words the way you do. Lazarus, brother, you're making mistakes like it's going out of style. Lazarus, brother, can you show me where a Pharisee called him good teacher? Lazarus, give me the chapter verse. I'll give you the benefit of town. So you keep chiming in. You keep making mistakes. You keep distracting me, Lazarus, brother. You may have to go back to the tomb. All right? So now let me repeat the do's and don'ts. The do's and don'ts of witnessing. Don't assume that your opponent defines the term God the way you do. What do I mean? When you say to a Joe witness, you guys got to listen to this point. Listen to this point. When you say to a Joe witness, Jesus is God, the Joe's witnesses have been programmed, have been taught, have been trained, brainwashed into thinking God means Father only. Jehovah is the name of the Father alone. Only the Father is Jehovah, only the Father is God. That's how they're taught. So when I say to Joe witness, Jesus is God, what he heard me say, what he heard me say, Jesus is the Father. Why? They've been brainwashed, programmed. Only the Father is God. Only the Father is Jehovah. Jesus is God. So you just told them Jesus is the Father. You see the mistake? You understand? So the man doesn't know the Trinity and assumes the term God refers to the Father alone. And this man should have corrected him. But now watch his response. Everyone got it? And it, was he talking well, to soul, God? body, spirit. No, God. No, he was talking to another person. Soul, body, and spirit. There goes the models again. And this guy says, no, he's talking to another person. Yes, you're right. See, this is what I would have jumped on. You're right. We don't believe Jesus is the Father. We believe they're three distinct persons, but they all possess the same nature. Right. He's talking to the Father who became his God when he became flesh. Yes. 
that was not that's not him. In other words, I would appeal, you know, to another person. Mm -hmm. My yes. God, my God, why have you forsaken? Hey, God. Yeah, you know. And so what about? But that, but that showed like there's it's there's a difference. There's a di there's a difference in the parts. Just like you have a soul, spirit, and a body, but you're still you. You're still one person. Modalism. In the same way, Gen modalism. Now she's gonna chime in. What's interesting? Go watch the two parts I did with Miles on destroying Adventism, lie, and soul sleep. What did I say? Joe's witness is Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist. Believe the soul is you. You are your soul. The soul is you. The soul is not something, some, something separate from your body. So when you die, your soul dies, which we demolished yesterday and in part one. Because they all believe this. Look what you're going to say. No, you don't have a soul separate from your body you are a soul that's what you're going to say listen genesis what is it i was about to talk about genesis what's genesis 2 7 read it and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being he, he came it didn't say he was given a soul he became See? and if you look at that that hebrew word became a, a living being was not given a soul he became a living soul because the Hebrew is a living soul. See, Genesis 2, 7. He was not given a soul. He became a living soul. In other words, you are a soul. The soul is you. So your soul dies when you die. There aren't three parts. He's trying to correct them. Now watch. I'm going to bury this argument in a minute. Okay. Paul says, or, or one of the apostles says in the New Testament, he said, the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, even piercing to the separation of the soul and the spirit. Yeah, Hebrews 4.12. So he just showed her a passage where soul and spirit are distinct, but I would have given her another one. But pay attention. I just want to finish this point. So that means there's actually a difference between soul and spirit. But as, as far as him saying, my God, that's similar to my father, because he says, my father and your father my God and your God. Okay, now, let me show you from the Jehovah's Witness Bible how to show that they're committing what's called, guys, learn. Go watch those sessions I did with Miles. Let me repeat. We're creature repetition. What these cults engage in is what's called the root or etymological fallacy. Guys, are you listening? This is your time, your class, and Lord willing, I can do a part two. And I'll finish all the other series, Lord willing, with to Nasser, as well as on hands, Lord willing, if God gives me health and holiness and purity. Okay. Provision to do it. Beware of what's called the etymological fallacy or root fallacy, meaning that they will always argue from the root of a word and assume that the word will always mean X. In other words, if you look at the etymology, the root, the origin of a word, it'll tell you that the root, the original, the etymology means X. I go, see, this is what it means. But if you get any good Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek lexicon, you will see that when they give you the root of a word, then they'll show you all the range of meanings because languages are living languages. Words will adopt and adapt new meanings. So what the lexicons or dictionaries will tell you is that the word was originally used to mean this. That's the root meaning. When it was first used, it meant this. But through usage, through time, additional definitions were added. You understand my point? So these cults are infamous, notorious for committing the root fallacy. See? The etymology of this word is X. Therefore, this no, that's not how language works. Even the dictionaries, even the lexicons, get look at your strongs, look at all of them. I'm going to sit down a little bit. You will see this admission. You will see they're telling you, yeah, this is what it was originally used to mean, but here are all the other meanings that it adopted throughout time. And I'm going to give you an English example, okay? I need you to learn this. I'm going to give you an example in English. Even in English, if you look at the word pig, P-I-G, in a modern dictionary, it will tell you it refers to an animal. But then it will tell you all the words that have been associated with the term pig, even the word swine, because that term throughout time acquired 
new meanings, <clears throat> metaphorical meanings, so that in your dictionary today, when you look at the word pig, one of the meanings is policeman, cop. Why? Because the term pig has been used metaphorically in slang to insult cops, and it's in your modern dictionary. But if I looked at a dictionary over 100 years ago, over 200 years ago, you will not find as one of the meanings in the entry, policeman, cop. Just like the word gay as Yana brought up, right? So everyone with me there? And here, let me show you why taking a word without giving the context means nothing. Let me teach you what I learned. And I learned this from Dr. William Campbell in the book, Quran and the Bible and Light of History and Science. He helped me. He did a section, masterful. And I recommend that book as one of the books that the Lord used to influence me. And I'll get you the link online in a minute. Okay? Yep, exactly. Now, let me let me give you an example. If, if I were to say butterfly, see, that's two words conjoined, butter and fly. Butterfly. So that means... Here you have butter mixed with a fly. That would be stupid, but let's put that aside. You see, that's stupid. Let me give you an example. If I were to say the word bat, B-A-T, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? B-A-T, bat. Well, you may think of a winged creature. A winged creature, right? Bat. And you say, oh, winged creature, but wait, wait, wait. You sure? Because I was at the stadium. I watched the White Sox, and one of the players got hit by a bat. Well, there it can't mean winged creature, because now I gave you the context. Their bat means that wooden stick used in baseball. Let me there. But what if I say I was at the zoo and a bat flew over my head and knocked my hat off? Well, there, because of the context, you would know I'm talking about the winged creature. Here, now, but now watch the same example that's not as clear. As I was standing, a bat flew over my head and knocked my hat off. Well, there, Without enough context, I don't know if the bat means the baseball bat, what flew over my head, or a winged creature, because that statement in of itself, without the background, it could mean a winged creature went over my head or the baseball bat. You see the point, right? You understand with these examples what I gave you? If you just read a statement, but you're not given the context. And it says, a bat flew over Mike's head and knocked his hat off. All right. Does that mean a winged creature flew and knocked his hat off? Or does it mean a baseball bat? Well, with that step statement in isolation without the context, I don't know. You see how complicated it gets? Do you understand how complicated it gets? This is why you need the context, the historical context, the cultural context, the background, when these statements were uttered, when the Bible was written, right? The cultural background of the authors, the historical background of the authors, as well as looking at the chapter and looking at the book. But then at times, the Bible doesn't give you enough context. That means now you're forced to look at the early Christians, those closest to the time of the authors, the heirs of the authors, and how they understood these statements. Because the farther removed you are from the time of the authors, the greater the likelihood for misunderstanding. Okay, is this all making sense? Is this all sinking in before I move on? But why are many Protestants afraid of looking at the early church? Looking at those closer to the apostles, the disciples of the apostles, the bishops who were appointed by the apostles and their successors? Because once you go that route, you'll be confronted with the fact that many of your doctrines as Protestants are not historical. 
And either that's going to scare you to realize that much of what you learn is not historical because now you're going to be faced with a choice. Do I now go to the fullness of the truth or do I stay Protestant? And that's something I agonized with for 10 years. And the Lord knows I'm not lying. See the problem? Now, let me give you another word because this is for your time and I can do a part two because I'm going to show you how she committed an etymological fallacy, root fallacy, because they don't know the Bible. They're programmed. They're brainwashed. Let me give you the word pitcher. Pitcher. Am I spelling it right? Yeah, this I'm spelling it right, right? So I'm illiterate. I can't spell. Pitcher. Let me. Am I spelling it right, guys? Everyone got it? That happened to me, Pojo. No lie. When I start looking at the early Christians, like Ignatius, Paul, not I'm a, and I said, man, dude, what the hell am I confronted with? Right? Pitcher. Now, pitcher. By the way, Mush is one of the witnesses here. Mush knew me when I was teaching Bible studies and I was still Protestant Calvinist. He was shocked to discover when he returned to the faith, may he stay and I stay in the faith and finish the race, how much I've changed. So I did spell it right. Okay. Yeah, I'm alerted. What does pitcher mean? It can mean anything and everything. So it means nothing without a context. So if I say, hey, the pitcher threw the ball. Well, right there, you know, I'm talking about baseball. Or they passed a pitcher of beer to Mike. Now, you know, I'm not talking about a baseball game, right? Maybe it isn't a baseball game because in a baseball game, you have a pitcher who throws the ball and a pitcher of beer being passed on. But you get my point, right? You understand? So when someone tells you soul is you and you are your soul and there is no distinction between soul and body, that tells you this person is biblically illiterate or dishonest. Why? Because I'm going to show you where soul does not mean your body. Soul refers to a different part of you, distinguished from your body, from the words of our Lord and the Holy Apostle Paul. Watch here. You ready? And I'm going to use their Bible. We're at the 9 minute 56 second mark. Here, JW.org. We're going to use their Bible. I hope you're appreciating this. You're learning how not to interpret Scripture, how to interpret Scripture. So you go to Matthew 10, 20. Use their Bible. Matthew 10, 28. Matthew 10, 28. Watch here. Well, look what our Lord says. Ma their Bible, okay? Their Bible. You learning? You appreciating this? Because it's a joy for me to be used by the Spirit and fill me with the Spirit to teach you. Yeah. I don't remember why I said I blessed you. All right. Matthew 10, 28. And do not become fearful of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. In your face, Jehovah Witness, if Adam became a living soul, wasn't given a soul, then how do you then explain this passage? Because Jesus says, someone can kill my body, but not kill my soul. That means my soul cannot be the same as my body. And though my body dies, my soul is still alive. What the hell are you talking about? Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body. Wait, both? Both means they're not the same. They're distinct. It's more than one in Gehenna. Okay, come on. You want to go out? Come here. Come here, you little coward. You want to go out? Sucker. Okay. With me there? What does this mean? You see? You just got to know your Bible. Let me give you another one. Just got to know your Bible. Let me give you another one. Okay? Watch here. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5.23. 1 Thessalonians 5.23. In their Bible, right? 5.23. 5.23. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, all of you, every part of you, and may the Spirit and soul and body of you brothers. Sure sounds like the soul is not the same as the body. And the spirit is not the same as the soul. And the spirit is not the same as the body. But these are different distinct aspects of you. 
Sound never respect. So what the hell is she talking about? Because she's programmed. She's been brainwashed. She's following a script. She doesn't know the Bible. She's following a script. You get it? Now let's go and finish the clip. Everyone got it? For Sessions 5.23. So let's go back. Nine minute, 53 second mark. That's where it was. All right, let's see here. And then we'll be done. Yes. Okay, got you. That he's like the Messiah, the Christ, right, exactly. all that, yeah. but not that he was God. God don't have a God. But as, as far as him saying, my God, that's similar to my father, because he says my father and your father, my God and your God. And not, he's, he's really one, pointing out. One of the, doesn't answer the question. Well, he says, my father, my God, my God simply means my father. No, he's my father and he's my God. So what does that mean? You want to go out? Let me let her up. Hold on. The cat wants to go out. Come on. All right, kitty. You want to go out here, kitty? Hold on one second. All right. So you get it? He's not answering. And well, I'll let him finish. And if you want me to continue tomorrow, Lord willing, God willing, if I have time, because he has another session I haven't watched where he's witnessing to five Joe's witnesses so we can learn from the mistakes. I hope this young man sees this and learns. The same, and if you truly believe in the Trinity, you believe they're one the same person. Did you I believe they're one, but three parts. Yeah, I know, but did, you just... did you hear it? Did you see what the ignorant said? If you truly believe in the Trinity, you believe they're one and the same person. One more time. And he, did, he let him get away with it. Watch here. Listen. Pointing out. One and the same, and if you truly believe in the Trinity, you believe they're one and the same person. Hear it? I believe they're one. Did you hear it, right? Let's do it again. Listen. To my father, because he says my father and your father, my God and your God, and he's not, he's really one, pointing out. One and the same, and if you truly believe in the Trinity, you believe they're one and the same person. I believe they're one, but three parts. Yeah, I know. But Just like you're one, but three parts. Yeah. But, you know, as a soul, you're, that's your composite self. It's, that, that is who you are. That's soul. So that means if you kill my soul, you kill me. But Matthew 10, 28 says you can kill my body, not my soul. So you see? You know, you, you are a soul. You don't have a soul. What is your genesis? So you are a soul and you don't have a soul. So how do you kill the body but not kill the soul if you are a soul? Because if you kill me, you kill my soul. But Jesus says you can kill my body, not my soul. See? This 126 say. Genesis 126. Is there, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them have in subjection the fish of the sea, flying creatures of the heavens and the domestic animals. Do you want me to end it with the discussion in Genesis 1 that shows that God is a trinity and not butcher it like our young friend did? I'm going to show you. Let me know because I'll, I can unpack that for you. Animals and all the earth and every creeping animal that is moving on the earth. Right. right. So God said, let us make man. Mm -hmm. So who's he talking about? He Jesus, said in in, in our image. You know, Jesus had a pre-human existence. But it's like, you know, when it says he's the master worker in Proverbs, I was I was before him all the time. In really, Proverbs 8, 22 to 36, that's Jesus speaking as wisdom. And he's the master worker that the father used to create. But he was first created and then everything else was created through Jesus. In his pre-human existence, who wasn't really Jesus? Remember, that was Michael. I'm yeah. And happy. Like it says, all things were made through Jesus, right? It says right, right, in John 1, he, you know, you know, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and nothing that was made was made without without Jesus. So even, even God saying this right here, let us make man in our image, he is talking to Jesus, but also it, it, we, we, it puts the Spirit even in the, in the display here. It says the Spirit was like hovering over the waters in Genesis 1. So again, we see like the Father, the Spirit, and even the Son, but he's referring to let us make man in our image, which is God actually, just like you were talking about Jesus talking to the Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Just because he's one doesn't mean he can't talk. It's kind of like David. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, right? So David was actually speaking to his own soul. Did you hear how he's comparing the Trinity? 
So God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So see, I am soul, spirit, and body, three parts. So God is like me, three parts. Like David can talk to his soul, so you can have this conversation in God, because there are three parts. And again, I check the church he goes to, they're Trinitarian, where he teaches. So unless they allow modalists there, I'm assuming he's a Trinitarian, but doesn't know how to explain it. And I'll go into Genesis 1 in a minute. He's actually speaking to himself. And we wouldn't say that David was crazy for, for saying that, but it's the same way that God was saying, let us, speaking of just like that, that verse, my soul, my spirit, and then he's talking about Jesus, my chosen one. So it's like the same way that God is talking to Jesus and even the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, let us, as we are one, just like David said, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. He wasn't signifying that he's two different people. He was actually soul and not two different people. So Jesus, Spirit, and the Father, not three persons. Man, I hope he reaches out to me. He may be a modalist, but I checked the church that he's invited to speak. They're Trinitarian. Oy vey, and there was spirit and body, right? And David is talking to himself, even his own soul. So again, we see the soul, the Father, which represents soul. And God said, my soul, like we, we just pointed it out. He's actually talking to himself. So the Father represents the soul, and the Holy Spirit is the spirit. So Jesus is the body. Damn, that's modalism. And he's saying, let us make them in our. He even uses the word our right? in our image. You got a son? Or got a uh, daughter. daughter. Okay, but say you had a son. Let's, would he be you? Notice again, he's supposedly referring to Trinity. Say you have a son. Would he be you? No, my son is not me. See, Jesus isn't God. He's not his own son. Did you catch it? He's not attacking. This guy is not attacking Trinitarianism. He's attacking modalism that would say there's one person who manifests in three different modes. Jesus is the human side of the father. And this guy is not helping it because he sounds like a modalist. So he's falling for his arguments because he's not presenting the Trinity correctly. You see how it works? So they're both confused and they don't know what the Trinity is. Neither him nor him. Would he be me? Yeah. Well, no. He'd be a separate person. Right. Well, Jesus is the Son of God. He's right. Not God, he's not an extension of God. He is the Son of God. Well, the, God. the, the Bible says that uh, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's right. And it even says that he's the exact representation of the Father. And it's what does that mean? He's the Father? Whew, boy, I'll, I'll do Genesis for you guys if you want says he's even the even the the image it says that he's even the image the image of god but jesus said well, see that's that's where i think we cannot see god and yet we're told god has been seen in the old testament and i can talk more about that tomorrow lord doing it's up to you i'll ask you but let me let him finish this point so i can go to genesis 1 and show you how you can choose a show this is Trinitarian, not the way he explained it that you guys kind of in, in saying we can't conceive god I think that's where the misunderstanding of him being three and one is because he's actually revealed it even through his son, Jesus, the truth that they are, that they all three agree as one. It even says he learned obedience through the things he suffered. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, and he learned obedience to who? He learned obedience as. Yeah. He came down and to who? yeah. To the father. Hello. I'm a Trinitarian, mister. The flesh. To God. To he God. came down to in God. the flesh. Was, we would never. In other words, if it was a, if it was a, uh, you did turn that camera off, right? Right? No, he didn't. He didn't turn it off. Please turn it off or, or point it away. From it. God. Yeah, there it is. All right, it's over. Okay, that's it. Now, do you guys want me to? Do you want me to explain how Genesis one points to the Trinity? He butchered. I've done sessions, articles on it, and then I'm going to give you two articles, Lord willing where I show you how the early Christians, the church fathers and writers say, this is the father speaking to the son and the spirit. And even Joe's witnesses admit that, but it's your time. I can do that for now and finish it. So you guys want me to do that? All right. Let's try to use their Bible for the most part. Okay. Watch here. Let us use their Bible for the most part. I'll try to use their When I can, I like to use their Bible. Okay. So let's go there. All right, JW.org. Number one, note to them that up until 25, when God is creating, up until 25, 
when God is creating, he simply commands something to exist and exist. Let there be, let there be, let there be. So JW.org, you go here, right? But when it comes to man, Adam, he changes the way he speaks and the way he creates. Let there be light. Let there be dry ground. So make sure you note that. But now watch here the importance. Watch here the importance. All right? Let's go here. The change in language. See? Let there be. God said let there be luminaries. All right. All of a sudden right here. But you got to pay attention 26, 27. Then God said let us. Only time he changes the way he creates and he speaks. Let there be luminaries. Let there be light. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Now, the word man is Adam in Hebrew. Keep in mind. Let them. That's the first clue right there, which the young man dropped the ball. Let them. Let them. First thing I want you to know, the word man, Adam, is a them. Adam is them, not a only a him. Adam, him is a them, plural. Just like God, Elohim, is a them, us, our. Okay, are you seeing the first connection? Who cares, Noah? Can you take it easy and don't change the subject? If you want, are you more fascinated about James White? Then I'll send you there. You're more fascinated about the debate than this topic? Then you need to get out of here, Noah. Because you're going to be drowned in a flood in a minute. All right? Or no odd, I should say. My language, you have a word for you. I don't know if I can say it. All right, nude. All right, now, pay attention. Man, Adam, God, is plural. God is us, our. Man is them. Let them have in subjection the fish of the sea and the flying creatures of the heavens and the domestic animals, and all the earth, and every creeping animal that is moving on the earth. Now, watch the God who is a them, us, our, become a him, just like Adam is a them. Okay, we're making these connections? Are we getting it? Lazarus, I still didn't see the verse where the Pharisee called him good teacher. Did you correct your mistake? All right. We got that so far? We got it, right? Okay, now watch here. Now 27, and God went on to create the man, Adam, Adam, in his image. Did you catch it now? The our image becomes his image singular. And our image now becomes his image singular. So God is a one and God is plural, one and plural. Our image, our likeness, his image. In God's image, he created him. But now notice who the Adam is. Male and female, he created them. Bam. Right there. The first clue. Adam, the man, is a him, but he's also a them. He's male and female. Two distinct genders, male and female. Two distinct physical bodies with their own unique physical parts. And yet together, they're the one Adam, and together they make the him. Two distinct genders, two distinct physical bodies with unique body parts who have the same nature, and together they make up the one Adam as a reflection that the one God is also plural, us, our, but he's one, God's image, his image. So God is a them and a him. Like Adam is a them and a him. And Adam is meant to reflect the fact that the one God is more than one person who has the same nature. Because Adam is more than one person, more than one being with the same nature. Are you seeing it? Before I move on? Because I'm going to make it clearer. Now here, I'm going to show you the King James Bible because it captures it beautifully. King James. And then you're going to see how it ties in with God. That's how you are to use this, not the way he did. Sorry. You got it? But you need to focus. So we're going to go to the King James that they use. Because King James does you a favor. You don't need to look at the Hebrew. You just look at King James. Now watch. 
And I'm going to show you Jesus, what he says about it. Genesis 5, verse 1 and 2. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made he him. Notice, man in Hebrew is Adam. Notice Adam is him. Genesis 5, verse 1 and 2. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Did you see the mind-blowing connection? Adam is a him, but the him who's Adam is them, male and female, and they are together the one Adam. You got it? Before I move on? You see it? Before I move on? All right. Do you understand why now God changed the way he spoke and created when he came to Adam? Because Adam was going to be the greatest expression in creation in a limited, finite, temporal sense that the one God is multipersonal, more than one person who possesses the same nature, and together they're the one God, just like Adam is more than one person, more than one gender, who have the same nature, and together they make up the one Adam. Okay, are we ready to go to the next level with this? Let me know if you're enjoying, because this is old, Cindy. This is probably the 20th time I've discussed Genesis 1 and 5. I've done millions of sessions on my YouTube channel and articles. That's why I keep encouraging guys. Go watch the older sessions and rewatch them and spread them like wildfire. Now watch here. Let me now take it the next step. Now we're going to go back to J-Dub, their Bible. All right. Genesis 2, 24. Eve came out of Adam because she was made from Adam's side. And then when Adam saw her, watch here, Genesis 2, 23 to 24. Genesis 2, 23, 24. Right? He was awoken. Then the man said, the word is ish, this is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She was made from my bones, made of my flesh. So she is my flesh and bones. So this one will be called woman because from man she was taken. Now, woman comes from the words womb of man. She's called woman because she's from the womb of man. Now in Hebrew, it's she'll be called Isha because she was taken out of Ish. Hebrew, the word Ish means male and husband. Isha means female wife. Now watch this. So she's Adam's flesh, Adam's bones. So she is one with Adam. She has the same nature of Adam. She's equal to Adam. Why? Because she came out of Adam. Okay, now let's see if you're following me. Okay. Let's see if you're following me. If Eve is from the flesh of Adam and the bones of Adam, that means she can't be inferior because she's of the same nature. His nature is her nature. So they're equal in nature. They're equal in essence and value. But now they're two different genders, male and female, and not the same person. And Eve now has her own physical body that came from the physical body of Adam. But now watch the mystery and how it points to the Trinity. Not Eve. Are you a prostitute and a son of a prostitute? Follow Harley. Don't change the topic. Now watch the next verse because this is going to be important. That is why a man will leave his father and his mother and he will stick to his wife and then they will become one flesh. Notice, there are two different flesh, two different flesh bodies, physical bodies, two different genders, but in their union, they're one flesh, not two. Sinking in so far? Before we wrap it up and blow your minds away? You know what Jesus says? Now that they're one flesh, do not call them two anymore. Matthew 19, 46. Matthew 19, 46. Read with me. 
In reply, he said, have you not read that the one who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his leave his father, his mother, will stick to his wife and two will be one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has yoked together, let no man put apart. They are not two, they are one. But wait, Jesus did not mean they're the same person, same physical body. No, the female is still the female. Her name is Eve. She has her own physical body and genitalia. And the male is still a male, different gender. And he has his own physical body and unique body parts. But because they come together in intimacy, do not view them as two, but one composite flesh composed of two distinct physical bodies, two distinct genders, two different persons. Everyone got it so far before I move on? Because now I'm going to show you how it ties in to Christ. You want to see how it ties in with the Trinity and Christ? All right. What is the word for one flesh in Hebrew? Let's look at it here. 224. That is why a man will leave his father and his mother, and he will stick to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Let me show you the Hebrew. Bible hub, interlinear. The word for one is achad. Achad. Here, let me show you. Oh, sorry. Damn it. Go out of here. All right. Hope you're enjoying this. Here you go. Achad. Watch why this is important. Achad. They will be flesh one. Achad. Achad. La basar, basar, achad. Okay? Remember, God says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So the man will be the greatest expression, the highest expression in finite, limited temporal physical form of God being a multi-personal God. Remember, God is not physical material. Adam is. Adam is limited, created, finite, temporal. God is not. But the point is, in creation, God created this creature to be the greatest example of God's plurality and unity. And now let me show you. Achad, let me enlarge a little more because I guess it's not large enough. Watch here. Let me show you. Do you see it here? Achad, everyone got it? Because I'm going to show you what the word is used, what word is used in Deuteronomy 6 4 when it says, Here, O Israel, Jehovah our God is one Jehovah. Let's go here. Let's see what the word is. And we're almost done. Watch here. We're almost done. Deuteronomy 6 4. Watch here. Shema Yisrael Yahweh Elohim Yahweh Echad. Wow. God is Echad. Adam is Echad. Same Hebrew word for one. God is Echad. Adam is Achad. Wow. We caught it? So now let's tie it in. The one Adam is male and female. Two distinct genders. Two distinct physical bodies with their own unique physical characteristics. But the female was made from the flesh of the male and the bones of the male so her nature is identical to his. It's the same nature. The male's nature is her nature, so they're equal in nature and value. Because if she's the flesh of Adam, the male, she can't be inferior to him. She's his flesh. You get it? So they're equal in nature, essence, and value. Because you can't say, well, a part of Adam's flesh is inferior to another part. She is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, equal to me in nature and essence because she's of my flesh. But she's not the same person as me, the same gender. And together they're one flesh, a flesh. And because they're one, 
no longer consider them two. And they're both named Adam. Now watch where we're going to go with this. Both named Adam. Let's go here. Let's go to Genesis 5 2 to see it's Adam. Which I showed you in the King James Version, right? Here it is. All right. And called Wa Yikra et Shamam them Adam. The male is Adam and Eve is Adam. They're both Adam and they're the one Adam. Right? Okay, now why is this important? If I were to say to you, after creation, there was Eve. See right here? Shamam Adam. Them, Wayakra et Shamam, them, Adam. They're both Adam. So now, let me break it down. If I were to say, say to you, after creation, there was Eve. And Eve was with Adam, and Eve was Adam. I'm being 100% biblical. She was Adam, and she was with Adam. So for Joe Witness to then say, what are you saying? She's with herself? That shows he's stupid. Why? Because Adam is not the name of one person. Adam is the name of all human beings or human by nature who came from the male and the female. What you're showing here is a name can be used for more than one person. You get it now? Adam is the name of the male and the female. The female is also called Isha, woman, because she's from Ish, the man, the male, the husband. She's also called Chava, Eve. But they're both Adam because they're the same flesh, same nature, same bones in that she's from his bones, his flesh, so equal to him, but they're not the same gender, nor are they the same person. But they're still one Adam. So if I say to you, after creation, there was Eve. And Eve was with Adam, and Eve was Adam, I'd be right. Because Eve was Adam by nature and married to a male who's also Adam. But they're not the same person. That's why you can say in the beginning, before creation, was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Because the term God is the name for more than one person that possesses the same nature. Did you get it now? You see how it ties into the Trinity? In other words, like Adam, God is one. But like Adam, he's not one person. Like Adam, he's multi-personal. More than one person who has the same nature and are inseparable, so you don't consider them more than one God. Just like Jesus said, don't consider them two, they're one. Now you see why God changed his language? God was already showing you when he spoke in the plural, Adam is going to reflect my plurality. I'm one God, more than one person of equal nature, inseparable. And the one Adam is more than one person of equal nature, inseparable. That's why I said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Did it ring a bell? Make sense? Because we're done with this. Now, let me get you the articles where the early Christians, fathers and apologists, will tell you that when God said, let us make man in our image, that's the Father speaking to the Son and Spirit, and where even Joe's witnesses admit the Father speaking to the Son. So let me get you those articles. And we're done for tonight. So you don't use Genesis to say, oh, see, like I am soul, spirit, and body. No, that's modalism. That's not the argument. I'm three, no. Adam is male and female, and they're offspring. They're all distinct. They have different genders, but they're equal in nature, and together they make the one Adam. Likewise, the one God is Father, Son, and Spirit. Distinct persons who are inseparable, who have the same nature. All right. Now let me get the articles. We're done. Let's go here. Genesis 126, plural. All right. So let me get the article. Here it is. All you need to do is go to my blog, type in the search engine. If you want to find something, type in Trinity, Deity of Christ, Michael, Islam, Joe's Witnesses, Salvation, right? 
Eucharist, Mary. Here I put in Genesis 126, plural, and boom, here it is. There you go. Boom. I put Genesis 126 and Tertullian. Here's the article. Guys, take all my materials. Take all my articles, my videos. Clip them, translate them, upload them. It's yours. You don't need to ask me. But you must understand the argument, share it accurately, and do not misinterpret. Because I've caught people doing it. And do not charge for my materials that God gave me to give you because I'm not charging you. All right? So there's the article. You see it right there? You got the link? Now let me get you the one where Joe's Witnesses admit that in Genesis 126, the Father speaking to Jesus the Word, when he says, let us make man in our image. Let me get you that. And we're done for tonight. Okay, let's go there. Hold on. Oh, what day is it? But I see none of you and me, all of the people. Okay. Okay, Stafford. Let's go here. Genesis 126, and I put the word Stafford. La, 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 la. Just give me a second to find it. I got a lot of articles. La, 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 la. Here it goes. Here's the article. Anti-Trinitarians agree. I just put in Genesis 126, Stafford, Greg Stafford, Darian. Boom, here it is. I quote Joe's Witnesses and Greg Stafford admitting, the Father is speaking to the Son, Jesus, the Word. Even though he wasn't Jesus, he wasn't a man. And they believe he's the Archangel Michael. Bam, there it goes. You got it? Bam, there you go. Now, brethren, I need you prayer words to pray for me. Pray for one another, obviously. And pray me into the kingdom. Please, you pray words, cry out to the Lord for this young woman, her family. God, keep us pure and have mercy on us. Transform us. Forgive us to practice what we preach. We come together according to his perfect timetable and I can provide for her and be Jesus to her and do ministry till the Lord summons us. Pray the Lord will allow me to see my daughters grow up to be godly women. And they are in my life. Remove the adulterous couple from their lives the lord give me strict discipline to get healthier lose more weight keep it off save me from gluttony to get holier and pure and save me from us to glorify jesus and preserve these channels they're not deleted and also for provision i'm in full-time ministry paypal patron use that money to glorify the lord and if the lord answers you i'll be back again and lord willing do you guys want me to continue breaking down some of these videos that this young man had with joe's witnesses are you interested in that? Because I can come back and then look at his other video where he spoke with five Joe's witnesses. I haven't seen it yet. But how many of you are interested? Let me know. If you are, then thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Purify us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus. Do that for my daughters, our loved ones. And seal us and fill us with spirit to love the Lord Jesus with perfect love and forgive us to never shame the Lord. In Jesus' name, Maran Athe. May the Lord return sooner than later. Amen, amen, amen. See you soon. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care. So you guys want me to do that, right? Continue reviewing. Okay, Lord willing, this will be done. All right.